Um, welcome everybody. Um, and uh, just before we get this started, we wanted to, um, Rise Up Animation wants to thank um, our sponsors at Sony Pictures Animation um, for uh, making this happen. Check out Mitchells vs. Machines if you haven't already. It's amazing. And Vivo's on Netflix now if you haven't checked it out already. So thank you to our sponsors at Sony Pictures Animation. Um, again, thank you everybody for coming, attendees, panelists, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to learn a lot too because I never did an internship before. Um, so, but I'm honored to um, have a co-moderator on this panel and it was her idea. She gathered everybody, she wrangled everyone. So this is all happening because <laughs> of my co-moderator, Angela Entminger. Hey! Hey, Angela. <laughs> Angela in the building. Angela is a TV writer and artist who works as a freelance writer on My Adventures with Superman for HBO Max, um, Santiago and the Seas at Nickelodeon, and is a storyboard revisionist on Loud House as well for Nickelodeon. Um, Angela's other work, if you, you might be familiar with this, she runs the, um, uh, she created the animation, animated journey podcast and the Glitch Decks rewatch podcast and she also writes and illustrates for comics for the uh, Loud House uh, graphic novels. So I think you should be doing more, Angela, with your time. But I will. <laughs> let this, I will. I will. Let I know. I just. Ask. I just watch way too much television in between all that. I need to be working harder. <laughs> working harder, man. <laughs> so the one comic that says Angela is the animation industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a great. Yeah, she's our beacon. <laughs> uh, but so, Angel, should we uh, introduce our uh, panelists as well? Yes, we shall. And thank you for the lovely introduction. So our first panelist up here is Garnet Garcia. Hello, Garnet. So happy to have you. So Garnet you is so current. Yeah, so she is currently an intern at Nickelodeon on the Casa Grandes. And before that, she was also an intern on Blaze and the Monster Machines. She is currently studying illustration and animation with the goal of working as a storyboard artist and character designer, as well as publishing her own webcomic. She is the eldest daughter of two immigrant parents from the Dominican Republic, and Garnet's biggest values as a creator are representation, collaboration, and authenticity, and storytelling. She dreams of producing her own stories, helping others bring their unique perspectives to life, and empowering young women of color to pursue their passions in the animation industry. And she is a Rise Up Animation alum, you guys. She, she's gone from minty to employed animation professional. So give it up for Garnet. Woo! Yeah. I'm so happy to be here. Um, as I said, like I last summer was just filled with Rise Up Animation panels like every Saturday in the discord so i'm so happy to be here and be able to share about my experience thank you so much guys i'm really happy to be here that uh that description thank you uh uh garnet for being here that description is like encapsulates like what rise up animation aims to do and and what we represent anyway so i'm like whoa this is perfect can i take this and use it <laughs> um, media um like things <laughs> uh so next up we got gabe aguyure um, is an aspiring story artist and storyteller. Um, he's loved cartoons since he was a kid. Who didn't? And is always down to analyze any show. So he's the worst to watch animation with. Uh, <laughs> uh, his favorite genre. We'll spend three hours on one episode, I, I bet you. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. Have you, have you guys ever watched, like, animation with a story artist? Oh, it's... It, oh, my gosh. Forget mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, no one wants to watch anything with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to the point now, it's like, I've seen that marker before. I've seen that prop before. They're like, yeah. stop. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, Gabe's favorite genres are action adventure and sci-fi. And he wanted to remark that giant robots are the best robots. You don't like tiny robots? <laughs> I mean, tiny robots are all right. I'm not saying, I'm not taking away from, let me rephrase that statement. I'm not taking away from any other type of robot. I didn't but know big robots so, are the best robots. I didn't know you were so discriminating, man. Um, I'm sorry. The robot sizes. Um, That's what we had to do. <laughs> oh, Gabe already coming in hot. Already coming in hot. Coming in hot with his hot face. <laughs> um, you guys know I'm joking uh, um, already although he is discriminating. But um, Gabe is currently <laughs> working as a production assistant at DreamWorks right now. So, hey man, congrats. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. And next up, we have Kayla Alcrez. Kayla studied and graduated from Cal State Fullerton with a BFA in illustration, and she is currently attending entertainment art courses at Fullerton College. And presently, Kayla is a summer 2021 Nick Turn on the Loud House, so I get to work with Kayla every day. On yeah. Zoom. <laughs> it's the best. So it's so great. Kayla. Yes. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. I mean, the same thing with, uh, with Garnet. I've been watching the, the Rise Up animation and a lot of the other the clubs like Latinx animation um, over the past couple of years. And it's just, it's so great to be like on the other side and hopefully share the, whatever I can for you guys to, to get up there as well. That's awesome. And so yeah. finally we have Joe Bernados, um, who's born in Miami and raised in the Philippines. Um, uh, Joe started his career as a Pixar story intern. What year was that, Joe? Uh, 2015. 2015. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and has worked on such shows since then as uh, Dragons, Race to the Edge, Madagascar, A Little Wild, and Jurassic World, Camp Cretaceous. So welcome, Joe. Thank you for being here. Man. Hello, y'all. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. I'm so excited to talk and hang out with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, we were talking about it before the call happened, and we, we just think that, you know, if whatever light we can shed on um, getting those internships, you know, how to prepare for those internships, um, and then what to expect when you get into those studio internships. So like, as you guys, as everyone all knows, um, there's a lot of studios in animation nowadays. There's like streaming and, you know, all these other like kind of platforms feature and everything like that. And so, um, and I know that a lot of these studios are looking to hire um, you know, really diverse and inclusive talent, you know, so, you know, they have training programs and internships. So that's why we're here now to sort of answer your questions or sort of share experiences of um, people uh, and artists and production people that have um, recently, you know, kind of, kind of broken through that wall. Because like sometimes, Angela, don't you think sometimes the hardest part is just getting your foot in the door? Oh my gosh, that, yeah, yeah. I have, I have said this analogy many times. I will say it again. It is like you're salmon and you're swimming upstream while you're being swatted at by bears. It's just like, how, how do I, how do I even? Or it's like that scene in Annihilation where it's like, it's like the shimmer. And you're like, I know I can get in there, but, mm -hmm. but, but how? Like, it just feels like this weird, invisible wall, you know? So it's always great just to hear Mm -hmm. how people actually did it mm -hmm. so that you too can learn how to do mm -hmm. it because it's not like it's not like other industries yeah. mm -hmm. and we're here for you guys we're here to help um, um you know like we said like you know kind of pull back the curtain on on how um everyone did it so let's get it started so like um when i wanted to throw it out to the to the group um you know when you see that job posting of that like artistic like uh, internship or production internship or anything like that. Um, how do you, when you're applying, what are some tips for setting up your cover letter, resume, website, all that kind of stuff so that you can put yourself out there? Um, Kayla, do you want to get that started? Sure. Um, let's see. Like, first thing, of course, I look as like the, the list of requirements and stuff like that. I look over my experience and try to match up to what the studio is, is wanting, what are their values. I go in the research on like, who are the people in charge? I look through myself and think about, does my, um, my values match up with the, the studios as well? Um, I went to a bunch of panels, like I said before, and just having the, the chance to hear from other people how they got into and me doing the research on myself really helped to figure out how to cater my resume and cover letter to that. And also presentation, I think is really important. Um, I hear a lot about, you know, resumes and cover letters. They only got seconds to look at it and to make it really pop out, you wanna really make it unique in, in, a, in a good way. So I made mine have like a similar headers and designs so that the cover letter, the resume, the business card is all like in this beautiful like catered package. It makes it look professional and has a little bit of touch of artistic splash on it. Um, but yeah, for as far as that, that's what's what I've done. So it lurk, it, I've gotten good feedback on that. Got it. Yeah. Anyone else want to chime in on that? What do you guys think? 
Yeah, I'd like to chime in, um, especially, sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, especially because like um, me and me and Kayla are both part of a Nickelodeon. So we have very, you know, Nick, every studio is going to have their own, mm -hmm. uh, what they're looking for, the way that they like to have resumes, you know, like I know that uh, Nickelodeon, for example, likes to have their cover letters no more than like half to two thirds of a page, you know? But when I showed my cover letter to someone who worked at Disney, they're like, use up the whole page. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I was specifically told not to do that. So I'm not going to do it, you know? Um, so I think my first piece of advice is like, if you can, if you can go to a lot of what I learned about how to apply to Nickelodeon came from me going to the Nickelodeon job fair last year mm -hmm. that was, that occurred virtually. And like Kayla was saying, like, do the research, listen to the values, like, listen to what they like, what they don't like, and then put that in, you know, in your finished product. Um, you know, if you can, and then also, I think I'm going to, another thing that I'm going to recommend is like, um, to, to have as many eyes on it as possible. Because as Kayla said, like, it, they're not looking at your resume for very long. I think that, I think it was, if, if Amy, uh, Kayla, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she said the average recruiter only looks at a resume for six seconds. Yeah, six. That's not a lot of time, you know? <laughs> that is not a lot of time. So you want to make sure that you have the things that are standing out are actually standing out. Have your friends check it, you know? Um, if what they're noticing is what you want them to notice first, you're doing a great job. If they notice your education or the fact that you like plants before they're looking at like your actual skills, then maybe you need to rearrange the hierarchy of your resume, you know? Um, so have different eyes on it is definitely, that definitely helped me, but also try to do research on the company themselves because there's going to be little, little, little things to just like make it a little nicer. Like, Hey, I'm listening to what you guys want. Here it is, you know, and, and it can work in your favor. Gabe, you had a um, uh, thing to add to that? What you going to say? No, I was with a uh, mirror what everybody's saying. Yeah, it's all, it's especially um, putting that research in. That research is so, so fundamentally important. I mean, your research could be a million different avenues. It could be reaching out to someone and be like, hey, how did you get your job at this company? Or it could be anyone. They'll give you a million different reasons and you definitely need to have multiple people look at it. And I mean, people who might not like you because they'll nitpick it. At least that's what I did. <laughs> I would reach out to like old friends who were just like, I know they didn't like me like that. <laughs> but hey, what's wrong with this? And whatever petty reason they came back with, <laughs> everything that was something to fix. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, you have like, I, I know everyone has a certain team or a certain amount. You utilize the people around you to look at your work, get as much feedback as you can possible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, reach out, especially when you're putting stuff together. There are a million different avenues to reach out to people, to look at stuff, industry professionals, whoever, Instagram, LinkedIn. I have a homie who met someone on YouTube, whatever yeah. you want to do. Yep. That's great advice, man. That's great advice. Reach out to your social circle. Um, Joe, uh, as a story artist, uh, how, what, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you um, would recommend uh, to make that like what we said, like six second, quick and easy glance of a story artist to put your work out there, you know, if someone's looking for a story intern. Yeah, um, in, terms, in terms of like, especially for like your resume or your portfolio, just echoing what everybody said, um, make sure that like it's packaged professionally and beautifully, but also just keep in mind who you're sending it to. It's usually recruiters, like, like you said, that um, like look at hundreds of these a day. And if you can just make it like memorable and like add something that's specifically your point of view and your like basically communicate who you are as a person and why you'd be an important like addition to the company. I think if you can somehow put that into words, like that'll make you stand out like quickly, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sending it to the recruiters thing, I think, is an important thing. Um, I, I kind of, uh, I tell, like, mentees or people that I meet with of just kind of, like, um, I mean, you recruiters are getting, you know, like, dozens or maybe hundreds, if you're, like, Pixar, of applications um, all the time. And so if they look at your portfolio and it's unclear what you want to do within the company, 
then they just, they're, I mean, like, it, they're not being mean about it, but they just don't know where to place you. On the, other, on the flip side of that is like, if you apply to some place, you know, like, uh, like Nickelodeon and it says, um, I'm, I'm by Pontius, I wanna be a background painter. They're like, oh, okay, we can put them here. We can send them to these art directors. Character designer, same thing. But if it's kind of like Bobby Pontius, I'm an artist. And um, which is what a lot of people do and that's fine, that's okay. But like when applying to break into the industry, I, recruiters won't okay they'll be like um right and they'll be like okay yeah. hey, uh we don't really necessarily know what you're applying for so it's it's very important to be specific to joe's point mm -hmm. no yeah exactly um like the one thing about the animation industry is like they love specificity they mm -hmm. love like putting you exactly where you want to be or where you kind of seem like you belong you know yeah so yeah, just be as specific as possible. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you had you can't have more interests outside of that. It's just that when you're applying to the thing, it helps everybody if you're very specific about what you want to do within that production or within that job or whatever. So, um, I would like to add to that as well on the resume front, because yeah. coming from the other side, when I worked in production at Nick as a PC, my, my team was responsible with interviewing the interns who would be on our team. And so something that we would notice a lot of times, which helped out the people that were applying is number one, putting your work before your education on your resume. And that's not to say that your education is not important because education is very important, but we wanted to see how the work that you did either in school or volunteering or personal projects or whatever part-time or full-time job you had in school was going to lend itself to the internship. And so if you're still in school, it's a really good idea to be involved in organizations like Rise Up or Women in Animation or Latinx or Pencil Mileage Club or Women in Animation Bay Area, like whatever specific club your school has, it's a really good idea to be involved with that, to be an officer with that, if your school doesn't have a club, if you start a club, they will, they will notice. That's a big reason why myself and one of my friends got our internships was because there wasn't a WIA chapter in San Francisco when we were in school. And so we called WIA in LA and started a chapter. That, you know, that shows initiative and wanting to like put your foot forward. So being able to say, look, I have transferable skills. I know, especially if you're doing like a production internship, Mm -hmm. I know how to do spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. I know how to send out professional emails. Mm -hmm. Rarely will you have to call anyone on the phone these days, but I, I know how to talk to people on the phone or on Zoom. <laughs> so that's really important. And also yeah. too, and Joe kind of touched on this as well, like, and so did you, Bobby, like being really specific and not just saying artist, but also it's a good idea if you're applying for art positions and you're also applying for production internships, Separate those two out. So have your production internship cover letter and resume and your art internship cover letter and resume. Because like you said, some studios, they don't care. If, if you want to do both, that's great. Other studios, that's kind of a, like a, I would say like a yellow flag. It's not a red flag, it's like a yellow flag. Of, uh, <laughs> we, don't, we don't really know how, you know, they don't realize people can do multiple things. So they're like, we don't know how serious they are. What if we hire them to be an intern and then they, they want to leave after their internship or they don't want to be hired here. So, so splitting them up is a really good idea. And that goes- Yeah, and oh, go for it. <laughs> I was going to say quickly, like that goes back to the research part, like know which studios are fine with both and know which studios want that separately. Um, cause some studios are like, no, you're either a production or you're an artist, but in Nick, mm -hmm. everyone who wants to go into artists goes through production. Like that's just the Nick way. Mm -hmm. Can I add on to that? I'm sorry. I'm having a little audio difficulty currently, but, uh, DreamWorks is the, it's the same way. It's, uh, it's that into production. And then even even in the full-time position, they're always like, someone will check up with you every month or three months, be like, hey, I heard four months ago, you said something about artists. Are you still thinking about that? Should I start sending you some material? Let's go. We need to get you ramped up in a week, maybe? I was like, oh, okay, all right, cool. 
That's very cool. That's very cool. Um, go ahead, Joe. Oh yeah, um, I was just gonna go off of what Angela said about um, all your experiences, like with school, um, bringing that into your resume and your and your cover letter, like head first. That goes the same way for um, if like for if you're an artist, where get involved in like student productions and productions in school, because those count as like your experience. That's gonna that's gonna be like quantified once people are looking at your stuff, you know. Like when I started, um, like I did, I mean, I obviously didn't have a lot of experience at the time, but I did like work with a lot of like, just like independent projects and independent like student like projects that we were doing at school. And like th those counted towards my resume at the time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's great. Uh, Angela, do you want to ask our uh, the next question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then. Interviews, it's the thing that clarifies uh, everyone, especially now, because now you, you can't just go in the office, it's on, it's on Zoom, so that's just, that's just the whole thing. So what are some things that y'all did to prepare for the interview, and then what were your interviews like? I'll start this one off. <laughs> my interview was weird i'll just say that out the top it was weird. <laughs> by the way gabe, gabe has never gone into the studio he's in texas right and you know he's been doing this whole thing in in quarantine man. it's crazy highly recommended ahead, always apply you never know what's going to happen they might work with whatever situation you have you don't always have to be in LA to apply to these positions. Good to know. But uh, the interview, honestly, the bef prepping for the interview, iron my shirt, just try to keep the day as normal as possible <laughs> so I, you don't freak out when you're there. And I was looking at so many questions and <laughs> trying to prep everything I could prep. And then the interview was literally sitting me sitting down. I was like, so we list, we, we wanted to talk about your jobs. They didn't want to talk about my time at school or anything. They want to talk about all the careers I had before this. They want to talk about transfers from retail to animation. And then they asked me, like, what, what's your favorite anime? And if you're into K-pop, I think that's what got me hired. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Yep. yep. Okay. All right. Wow. Are you into K-pop game? I am now. <laughs> <laughs> he became a fan. He was like, I've heard of BTS. Let's just talk about that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Kayla, what do you think? That was great. For me, um, as far as like preparing for an interview, it's always wanting to do, like I said, the research, trying to, to build that confidence. There's no way for me, at least, that and there's no way I'm going to be ever not nervous into an interview, but the best way to accommodate that is to practice, of course, and um, I take notes and little bullet points and things like that. But as far as like the actual interview, it was, it's weird because, you know, we're in weird times right now. So both of them were either a phone call or in a Zoom meeting. The phone call was a little weird for me because, you know, I don't have the person in front of me to see and gauge their reactions to my answers. So that was pretty nerve wracking for it, for me as well. But you just have to remind yourself that, you know, you did all the, all your research, you, you did all the practice, um, you did what, all you could, and there's always going to be a question here and there that they throw out that might, you know, make you trip a little bit, but you just got to take a deep breath and just be honest and be yourself and don't lie about anything in the interview. <laughs> um, and and then for me, it was great. You know, the, the first interview was just a bunch of questions about, you know, you know, what your typical job is, like, uh, why do you want to work here? What do you have to offer? And then as you get more comfortable in, they throw things like, oh, like, what's your your favorite show or any any of the Nick characters, which one would you describe as yourself to kind of get in an idea of how your personality kind of fits into the company. And I want to go to the actual last interview it was just panel and it was very casual. I was very surprised, but, um, you know, like I said, just do what you can as far as like preparation. You don't be scared about messing up. If you need to have like little notes on the side, that's okay. They're, they're always okay with that. So mm -hmm. that's how I did it. <laughs> uh, I got a really quick 
um, dumb story. Uh, like when I, one of my first jobs was in games animation. Mm -hmm. and I was trying to be an animator. And I had heard in games animation, you had to be a gamer. And I wasn't at that point. And so like in the interview, they asked me of like, hey, you're a gamer, right? And I'm like, yep. And then they go, what is your favorite game? And I was like, oh, um, Final Fantasy? And then, cause that's the, a popular one. And they're like, oh, cool. What's your favorite Final Fantasy? Which one? And I was like, what? <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy right? And they're like, oh, that's the best one. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of stuff. So sometimes, sometimes, I mean, I mean, I'm like, my whole career is like, fake it till you make it. Uh, <laughs> so like, you know, just tell them what they want to hear. And I, yeah, I, I don't know, six, is that a good one? I, I, I it's, still, it's one of the better ones. You did okay, good. Okay. I'm proud cool. of you. Great, <laughs> great, great. It's game of truth. If asked me anything about Final Fantasy VI, I would have been like, oh, yeah, um, isn't there like a bird that you ride? Cool. <laughs> we just kind of like move on past this. <laughs> you want to add like one quick point? If anyone asks you what your favorite Final Fantasy is and you say seven, they know you lied. Oh. They know you oh. lied. <laughs> Really? I get Woo! it. Seven's a good game, but they know you lied. <laughs> oh, this is a pro tip. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I still okay. have not played a Final Fantasy game in my life, but I said six. Play six, the one you lied about. <laughs> I should send a thank you basket to uh, Squaresoft for making Final Fantasy six for getting Yeah. Me. And then you have a little note saying, and, and you know what? I actually did play it, and it is quite great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Super dumb. <clears throat> no, that's that's a great story. <laughs> Does anyone else have uh, um, <laughs> things uh, prep for an interview? Prep for an interview. Um, definitely, I want to add on to what Kayla said that like the idea of like breathe, <laughs> just breathe, <laughs> like just breathe, relax. Um, I personally have found the virtual interview process much less nerve wracking than the in person one. Because for me, I just like, I have all my information right there on my screen and I just read it. <laughs> I got my resume right there. I got my questions lined up. I'm like, but I'm still looking at the screen. I look confident. I look great. Um, but something that I always try to remember is like interviews are just professional vibe checks. Like mm -hmm. that's all they're doing. They're just checking your vibe. Like, are you a good fit? Do you, they want to know things like, what's your personality like? Are you going to fit in with the team? How do you solve conflict? You know, that question about like what you're like for me, they, and I know Kayla, they ask, they ask every, almost everybody, like, what's your favorite Nip character? What character do you relate to the most? Like, even that is a mini vibe check. You know, I know that for me, my answer was like, I really like Toph and I like Nico from Glitch Text because they all, they both have like great energy and I've always been very energetic and I love their spirit. And like, that's, that's a cool answer, you know, or like, I really like um, Sokka because he's always coming up with, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Avatar fan, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, like, uh, you know, but don't, don't say something like, oh, I like Squidward because he's kind of like, you know, <laughs> snarky and kind of like mean sometimes and I can be mean. It's like, you don't want to say that. Like, maybe you do. <laughs> maybe you do. Or like, oh, I like Patrick because I'm a little lazy sometimes. It's like, no, I don't want to hear that. No. What you're not going to do, what you're not gonna do is talk about Squidward like that on a public <laughs> No, I think that's I'm great giving, though. It's I'm like, hey, so just so you know, I mean. <laughs> no, but I'm giving these examples because example? literally yesterday we had uh, a class with the with the uh, recruitment team and they were saying that these are things that people have said in interviews. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's that's the wrong vibe. You, you did not pass the vibe check if you're going to say something like that, you know? So like, remain calm, be yourself, be prepared. But remember that like, it's, it's really just to get a gauge of you. They want to see that you're professional. They want to get a, a glimpse of who you are, because again, this is an industry of people. So like, you know, they even want to see like, what team would you be the best fit for? Maybe you've got the skills and it's fine, but maybe one team has a certain like group of personalities and another team has a different group of personalities. And it's like, which one are they going to fit in better with? You know, all, that, that's all it is, you know, also come with like, have questions at the end of the interview, mm -hmm. always. It shows that you're interested and they like that. Right, right. Um, I agree with all of that. I wanna to add to, you're right about 
is even if you're not a good fit for that team, because we've done that where we've interviewed people and gone, they're great. They're not the best fit for our team though, but they're great. And we've told Amy, you know, our recruiter and then said, but you should still hire them, but just for maybe a different show. And we've then seen interns the next semester that we had interviewed that ended up getting on other shows. So even if the interview doesn't go great for that one show, if you have a good interview and if you have a good vibe and good energy and it's just not the right fit there, it may be the right fit somewhere else. So that's something to keep in mind too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, so let's get to the meat and potatoes, the actual interview. You come in, you prepare, what is that like? What was that like for you guys? Um, I just, it makes me like nervous just even thinking about it because it's the most nerve wracking mm -hmm. thing you could probably do. And it doesn't help that they surround you <laughs> with like that <laughs> and you're just like, oh, hi, um, hire me. So what was that like for you guys? Joe, do you want to kick that off? Um, in, for, it's actually kind of weird because I didn't really have an interview for like my, for the Pixar internship. They kind of just um, called and I just got an email saying, we got your application. Could you send us a physical copy of your portfolio? And then a few weeks later, I just got a phone call saying like, hey, we'd like you to be part of the program this year. So like, it was all very just kind of quick, which is weird. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> Woo. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Dodge that ball. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, I think when, if you're an artist, um, and this is how I approach like all the interviews I go into. Mm -hmm. They've already seen your work. They know what you can do. Mm -hmm. And like Garnet said, um, it's all a vibe check. So just like be yourself, be relaxed, and then just kind of like be open to just kind of making friends, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the new thing. It, interviews are a vibe check. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kayla, how was yours? Was it also like virtual? Yeah, it, I guess that's what Garner was saying. Like she kind of liked the, the fact that it was all virtual. I didn't have to be in a room surrounded by people. Um, so it was pretty, it was nice to have like my notes in front of me and just sit right here and smile and, you know, just try to get to know the team here back and forth. So it was, it was good. I was happy with it. <laughs> No, that's, that, th those are great. Um, that's great advice of just having notes. Come with questions, like Garnett said, you know, come with questions because like they'll always, interviews always ask like at the end, do you have any questions for us? And <laughs> the worst thing you can be like is like, nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no yeah. thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> no thoughts always, have... Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was making a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, they'll always ask that at the end and sometimes I mean like even if you didn't prepare anything just make it up on the spot man um, I don't know if you guys are like me sometimes I'll start a sentence and not know where I'm going with it um, until the uh, very end um, and it'll be just the worst question in the world but um, <laughs> what are so sorry go ahead Angela no I'm just laughing at what you just said okay but, like, <laughs> but it's still a question Bobby even yeah. if it doesn't go anywhere, it's still a question. So that's still okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's still a question. And it's like you're trying. I mean, like, they, everyone that is on the other side of the table no, has been there before. So they understand that it's a really um, daunting experience. So, you know, everyone is on your side. Uh, they want to hire you. They just want to make sure that you're not like crazy peeps. Um, yeah. I mean, they're rooting for you. Go ahead, Dave. A question you should always ask, just to, you know, move, keep rolling with this professional vibe check Garnett has provided us. You got to check their vibe too. Oh. So whatever question you have loaded that lets you like, that helps you gauge personalities of new people, ask that question in the interview or ask them about the work culture you're about to enter. Because I get it. It's a dream job and you want to break in and get your foot in the door in animation. But if you walk into a terrible situation, that might affect your career going forward. No, absolutely. I, I definitely want to add on to what Gabe, because I was going to say the same thing that like you're, you can have questions that like, like something came up in the interview and you're like, oh, okay. Like I want to ask about that, but like come with a pre preset list and vibe check them. Like Gabe said, you know, ask them, 
what's a typical work day like? Like, what's the culture of the company? What's the culture of the team? Like, those are questions that you're allowed to ask. Um, you know, you can, you can say like, what, what, you know, a question that I, I think was, um, was a good one is like, what are your team's strengths? Like, what do you guys value in what you do? Like, in terms of like, is it the communication? Is it the fact that you guys are always on time? You know, like, you know, you can ask these questions as well. Um, and, and it, it might be easier just so you don't have to think about it because coming up with something on the fly can be kind of hard. Come with that preset list. That's allowed. You are allowed to do that. And that's exactly what I did in my interview. I had my resume and then my questions on the side so that when they were done and they're like, do you have any questions for us? I was like, yes, I do. I thought of one to ask too, which will ask them how often overtime happens. Mm. Because here's the thing. Overtime is a low-key gauge of how well run the show can be sometimes. So if it's a season one show, there may be a lot of overtime just because it's season one, they're figuring everything out, they're figuring out the show, they're getting the production pipeline. That's understandable. If they're in season four and they're doing overtime all the time, that might be a sign that maybe it's not the most well run production. So to Gabe and Garnet's point, yes, it could be a dream job, but it could be a dream job on a nightmare fuel show. So you may not want to be on that show. You may want to just, just wait and see if you can get on another show that maybe is like more well run. People have a better sense because if it's a more well run show, there's more time for you to learn and more time for them to also help you and answer your questions. If it's on fire, they may just hand you a hose and be like, okay, just, just start anywhere. We don't care. And you'll be like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so that's just something to keep in mind. I love, I love where this conversation is going to just because it's like, it empowers like even young artists trying to break in to not just take anything because it's, it's a, it's a job. You put, you put your, their feet to the fire as well. And there are enough studios out there and enough work out there that you don't have to just kind of take, like the first thing and grill them um, on it, you know? And if you don't get that, if you get a weird feeling in your stomach, like you can say that, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, you know, you know what I'm getting that panel? I mean, like- mm -hmm. I, I, No, I know exactly email. what you're getting at. If, send if, them an email that says, sorry, you didn't pass the vibe check. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> the thing is, it's not gonna go away. Like if you go into something and think this might be weird, it's probably weird. It will probably stay weird the entire time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can avoid that by just going, you know, like Bobby said, especially right now, because unfortunately the way things are going, we're, we're still, you know, being on Zoom and whatnot for health and safety reasons, which is good. But because of that, there's a ton of animation. So much animation is being made right now. So there's a lot more opportunities. So you can look around and go somewhere and go, oh, but you know what? This place also has an internship. Let me try over here instead. Right, right, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think Garnett said it, uh, that like be conscious of the vibe. I mean, like if you, if you get into that room and it's, it's, you kind of feel like, I mean, animation is very, um, guilty of this, like it's like a bro culture and you're like, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, this is gonna be a problem. But like, again, I mean, like, I don't know, everyone's situation is different. You kind of have to weigh of like, you know, like you're paying bills and that kind of stuff. But like, I don't know, that kind of toxic stuff is like, you know, look out for it. And, um, you know, hope, you know, I mean, thankfully, um, employees are being more vocal about it, you know? I don't think they didn't have that platform in the past, but like, you know, yeah, it's just not worth it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I don't want to keep going down a negative route. Like Angela, what, what do you think was the next? Yeah. So, okay. So we may have touched on this a little bit, but just to, to drill down a little deeper, why do you believe that you specifically were hired? Like, <laughs> what was it that you think, you know, these were the things that I had in my resume or cover letter, or these are the things that I said, or maybe they flat out told you, 
hey, we hired you because of this. Like, what do y'all think that was? What was that special sauce that you guys brought to the job? I actually want to raise my hand and go first for this because um, I did not go the typical route, but I think it was an extremely important lesson that I want to share with others because I think, you know, we're talking about resumes and we're talking about cover letters. We're talking about applications and that's really, really important. Obviously you need to apply. However, I did not get the internship because I applied. I got the internship because last year during the Nick job fair webinar, I was extremely involved. I went to every single panel. I asked questions every single time. They had this really cool option where you could raise your hand and they would like unmute you and you could ask panelists like questions. And it was, it was great. It was super informative. I just went there to learn, you know, because they were talking about like, what does a character designer do? And what do they put in their portfolio? And I was like, yes, yes, please teach me and whatnot. I was so active in that chat. And I, and I because I was attending every single one, eventually the people who ran it started to recognize me. And they gave me little shout outs and they were like, oh, look, Garnett's back and whatnot. And after like a week of this, Amy, uh, Amy, who is the person who runs the internship, she, she reached out to me and was like, hey, I would love to connect. And I was like, oh, I, whoa, what? You know? And so we got in a Zoom call. And at that point, I'm like, listen, any, any, any conversation with anyone that important is basically an interview. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present myself the best that I can. You know, this is a vibe check in and of itself, you know, and, and we sat in a Zoom. She asked me about, about me. She had done research on me. She found my Instagram. She found my architecture work from back when I was in architecture school for like a year. I was like, how did you even find that? And after 30 minutes of talking, she was like, okay, I'm just going to be real with you. We want you to do the internship program with us. Like, we really love your attitude. We love how active you are. We love how you take initiative. And we really feel like you're going to bring that to the internship and whatnot that is what got me in. I didn't submit anything yet. <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't send her my resume, you know, but this is an industry of people, you know, and, and who you are can, can be enough, you know, your attitude, your passion, your, your, what you want to do. If you say like, listen, man, I just really, I want to make shows about giant robots and you're really passionate about that. Someone's going to remember you and be like, yo, <laughs> Yo, someone go get Gabe. He was talking about giant robots, you know, just because it's about the passion and who you are as a person. So yes, resume, application, all very important, but do not underestimate like your, your passion and your drive and who you are as a person because people will notice that, you know, that's very important in the industry. Anyway, that was me. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> I'm gonna get a mic so. Amazing. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Can I please follow up? To Gabe, that? go ahead. Because yeah. that is that is an amazing approach, and the introvert in me had a heart attack hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a massive extrovert. I will say that. That's exactly what I want to follow up. I want to give like the uh, the other side of it. It's a, it's a similar workflow. I didn't get my job off my <laughs> cover letter or my resume or my portfolio or anything. I was working at Amazon at the time. I was a driver there. Don't work at Amazon. Respect yourself. <laughs> Wait, Gabe, they're one of our sponsors, man. Take that back. Amazon's <laughs> the best. I love Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon Great. sponsors Rise Up Animation. That's that so support keeping Jeff Bezos yeah. in yeah. space fun. It would be like what? in space and not paying people yeah. enough money. Jeff to Bezos eat. is like, <laughs> yes, I've always loved animation, and let's sponsor these kids. Uh, oh, ahead, Gabe, oh my sorry. gosh! Gabe, go ahead. So I was working at Amazon, right? Love them. You, is this a karaoke <laughs> mic that you're working? And I was a, uh, I was on LinkedIn every day. At the beginning of my shift while we were waiting for people to go out, I would message 20, 30 people just quickly. Quick message, say, hi, my name is Gabe. I want to talk to you about your experience in animation. I met uh, a good friend of mine, Andrew, through that, who introduced me to Angela, which got me here, which is awesome. And that's also where I met uh, an, a line producer at DreamWorks. I want, to say, I want to say their name. I also don't want their DMs to get lit up after this. <laughs> 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 <And> their first <laughs> name. 
Oh, uh, Ashley. Love Ashley to death. <laughs> but uh, it was a Zoom call with, uh, with her, and we we talked for a little bit. She asked me, "Is like, hey, let me see your resume. Let me see this. We talked about jobs. We talked about uh, our kind of relating cultures. And from there, she's like, all right, you're cool. I like you. I'm going to put in your name in a recommendation for our next round of internships. And I was like, oh, dope. Thank you. And then to this day, she will always say, I didn't get you the job. You got you the job. I just put your name out there for someone to see. Sure. And it's just, it's that little spark of just putting yourself out there, just like what Garnet did. Garnet made that spark herself. But if you're an introvert and you have trouble kind of making that spark, reach out to people, show that you're excited about this, show that you're passionate about this, and someone will be willing to just roll the dice on you. Going off of you, uh, what you said, and also Garnet, I, the, the one thing that I'm seeing is like networking is really a big factor in all of it. For me, it, I did apply, but the biggest factor was knowing people who are willing to put the good word for you. Um, coming right out of the school, I had the chance to do a meet and greet with an executive at Disney TV. And this was like months of planning. Like she was, her schedule was booked. There was like, I had to wait so much time just to meet with her. But I was willing to drive over an hour all the way to Burbank and just spend 15 minutes with her just to talk. I just wanted to go and ask questions just to see, uh, hear about her experience and stuff. And by the end of it, she was just kind enough. I, I don't know, she saw something in me and she was like, you know what, let me get you in contact with, you know, Amy Wu and you should really apply for the, the Nick internship. And so I did that for the fall and I think into the spring until finally she finally uh, interviewed me for the first time just last year. And this is where things become a hot mess with 2020, you know. <laughs> I went through the, the interview and it, so far it was great. I was booked for the second one and then pandemic hit and that's when they announced they canceled all the internships for the studios. So that opportunity went out the window, but um, I tried to stay in contact with her this whole time. And during that whole time in, into 2020, I spent with uh, all the panels at all the clubs like Latinx Animation, Rise Up, of course, um, my clubs at Pencil Mileage and Easel at Fullerton. Um, I tried to, you know, keep in contact with her over this time, just like hitting her up like, hey, you know, is there any news about the internship coming back or how you've been or stuff like that? And I didn't think that was going to go anywhere. I think that was the, the end of the, the journey for me as far as like that, that path. It wasn't, wasn't until just back in last spring, I heard some rumors about the, the thing coming back. And I, I emailed her like, hey, um, I don't know if you remember me, but I wanted to see if I could reapply or if the internship is reopening again for the summer. And she's like, oh yeah, Kayla, get ready for your second interview uh, in a few weeks. Uh, we're reopening for summer. There, Amy. I was like, what? Very <laughs> Amy. To start all over. <laughs> Amy makes things happen. She don't play games. Oh, uh, yeah. That was just a huge surprise. But what I'm trying to say is networking is really key to, to all of the, the things. Like just going to random events and making a connection with someone and uh, talking to them and getting that vibe track, as everyone is saying. I, I think that's what really is key to pushing you up on the forefront versus all these, you know, hundreds of people that are applying to the same thing. So. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, yeah, uh, coming from, uh, from the story internship program at Pixar, um, they told us basically that the reason that they hired us was because of like the, the story perspectives that we had in our portfolios where um, a lot a lot of like the story artists that year like had a lot of just character driven kind of like emotional emotion filled like story storyboards in, in there and it really sort of like aligned with, with um, what they're looking for as a studio and yeah and that's kind of like what got me hired anyway. So Joe um, can you kind of elaborate on that because I think you were touching on something of like what do you think specifically in your story portfolio kind of stood out to the story team at Pixar? Um, mm -hmm. If they shared that information with you or uh, like opinions that you have that kind of- Yeah, I think um, especially as a story artist, a lot of people tend to 
want to put their most kind of action filled and most like elaborate like storyboards in their portfolios. And I think um, what got me hired was that I just put like some personal stories and like a lot more kind of acting driven like stories inside my portfolio that kind of really made it, made it stand out and kind of gave off like the sort of like perspective of um, like stories that I was interested in t- telling and that really kind of sort of connected with them, I think. When you say personal stories, like things that happened in your own life that you- um, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, things that happened in my own life or even just like, like cute, like little personal stories of like a family having a bedtime story together, like that sort of thing. Uh, Jade Garcia is asking, how did you show that? Was it like a, just like a, um, like online kind of like doing the... Uh, oh, um, it, at, the, it, at the time we, uh, we had to submit like a physical portfolio. This was like back in the day. So it was all like printed out. 15. <laughs> <Woo. Okay>. Yep. <laughs> so it was all like printed out in a contact sheet and then like they get to like look at it live kind of thing. So I didn't even get to pitch it, which is funny. Where do you think, Angela? Thank you for that. Uh, should we, should we, which questions should we move on? Oh, yeah. Garnet, go ahead. I just wanna say one more thing, cause this was something that kind of confused me before when I was like watching Rise Up panels, when I heard so much about networking, 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 and I got it, but it wasn't until I got the internship that I truly started to understand why it's such a thing. It's not just a popularity contest, you know? It's not just like, oh, no, a bunch of people and they'll give you a job. It's like, no, that's not it, you know? It's the fact that there are so many applicants that are always for, for jobs, for internships and whatnot. And because it, it's like, they wanna work with people that they trust. And it's a lot easier to trust someone that you've had a face-to-face conversation with than someone you've been, never met before, ever. You know, that's just the truth. And I think we, anybody can agree. You know, so it's not a matter of like, oh, this person's better than you, you know, or, or like, oh, this person knows like 20 people and that's why they got it. It's like, no, you make the connections so that people can get to know you as a person and you can get to know them as a person so they can vouch for you and know that they're making like, I guess like a quote unquote, like a safe investment that it's like, I can, I can vouch for this person because I know who they are, or at least I know they're not like crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's why networking is important. And that's why I think, you know, especially for me and Kayla and Gabriel, like that's, that's the thing. We've had these conversations, people can vouch for us and then, and then we got in. And again, to Gabe's point, you don't have to be super like, I mean, you know, at these things I'm kind of, kind of crazy and, and loud, but like you don't, you can still like thrive as an introvert, right? Yes. Um, Most of this industry is introverts, so you're fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I would say it's like 85, 90%. So yeah, so you guys are, I want to piggyback on what you said as well, Garnet, because from talking to recruiters, they're getting hundreds, if not thousands of applications. When I was an intern, they had a thousand applications for the internship and they hired five of us. So to your point, it isn't popularity. It's, there's a thousand pieces of paper of names it's like needle, you know, a stack of needles and we're trying to find a needle. This is kind of impossible. <laughs> so being, knowing the person, like you said, it helps because then at least you know, oh, I recognize this name. Good. Let me look at this person's application. So it's just, it helps you help them because there's just so many applicants. Which is not to say that, hey, if you haven't met them, you can't get in because I know people that they applied online, never met anybody, and they still made it through. So you can still get in. It's kind of like uh, raffle tickets where if you have one raffle ticket, you might get in. If you have 50 raffle tickets, kind of a better shot. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and don't let that, I mean, like that, that is a, a true and impressive number, but don't let that get you down. I mean, mm-hmm. like, like I always say that, like for me, like I, like I at one point applied to every single studio that exists in the world as an animator and um, I got rejected by all of them. And even, uh, you know, I, I 
I love Blue Sky, but they rejected me twice. Uh, just I applied once, they rejected me twice for some reason. Uh, and it's more funny than anything else. It's a funny <laughs> anecdote. Uh, what did you do to get rejected twice? They sent it twice to you. Uh, maybe my reel was just that bad. Uh, and then they're just like, listen, uh, listen uh, like if you were thinking of rejecting or uh, applying again, uh, just don't. Um, but I will say, I will say that, um, you know, just like, I, I think like just putting everything out there, just kind of like every studio, you got your resumes ready, you got your demo reels ready, you got your portfolio ready, and everything is ready. Um, eventually, I mean, you know, it'll happen for you. Um, you know, just like persist past the rejection. I mean, like I had a friend that was like, um, I can't handle <laughs> rejection. I'm like, yo, that's, you need to get used to that. And that's okay. I mean, that's fine. You know, I mean, like, guys, when you're applying to these internships, it's, oh, I, I applied to the Pixar internship. I got that whole, like, like, what is, like, the, the note of, like, hey, you were really close, but, you know, we moved on to someone else, and I was, like, okay, uh, <laughs> everyone gets the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing, um, but I will say, just, it, it, you know, when you're applying to these internships, it becomes a game of, like, persistence, and just kind of, like, yo, go at it, go at it, go at it, go at it, um, and just don't give up, um, you know, and, and, and um, I met a lot of people that are prodigies, but I wasn't one of them. I got rejected like thousands of times. And so uh, the only thing, the reason why I'm in the industry now is just because I was like stubborn as AF. I see you, mom. Um, stubborn AF. <laughs> and I wanted to make it happen. Uh, and if you want to make it happen, this is going to be, I mean, you just got to be stubborn AF, you know, persistent AF. Um, Can I add on to that real quick? Yes, yes. I feel like we're in church, and I just like <laughs> there's like gospel, <laughs> like gospel stuff. Hold you know? on, brother Bobby. Let me preach for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, that was do it, Gabe. Do it. Uh, Let's go. Dude, go that ahead. persistence. That persistence is so key. And I, I, I know my story was short. I want to, I want to preface this by saying. That was a seven month period of messaging 20 people a day for one person to like me. Yeah. Think about that. 20 people a day, seven months times 30. I'm not going to do the math. I don't have a calculator, but that's a good <laughs> amount of rejection. It's fine. And if you take rejection hard, I promise it getting texted to you on an app, it rolls off after the fifth one. You're just like, ah, oh, cool. All right, next. <laughs> Next person. <laughs> very true. Very true. Okay. I have a calculator. I just did that math. That's 4,200 people. Uh, yeah. mm. you, Only is, three of them really liked me, boy. Yeah. yeah that is essentially, that's, uh, that's a good chunk of just the guild. <laughs> like the entire animation guild, I think, has like 6,000 people. So you've, uh, theoretically, you've met like, what, two thirds of the people in the guild already, man. So they, they know you. They yeah, know. they know me, but they don't. They don't like oh, me like that. that that's too bad. That's too bad for them, though. Yeah. That's too bad for them. Yeah, this is your come up story. <laughs> what what of them rejected me, and then I met them oh, at my internship. You're like, hey, how you doing? They messaged me back on LinkedIn. It's like, hey, what's good, man? Sorry about that. Didn't know you were cool. It's like, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh shoot, oh shoot, they're here. I got I gotta make nice. Hi, Hi, Key. I reached out to somebody who was a character designer and I was like, hey, I'd like to talk to you. The disinterest in their comment was so blatant that I never talked to them again. I was like, I'm so sorry for bothering you. I never spoke to them again. Oh my they God. ended up being on the show that I worked on, but they didn't recognize me. They didn't remember me. Oh. And it just came up to me I'm like, hi, how are you? I'm so happy to talk to you. I'm like, oh, you have no idea who I am. I never brought it up again. <laughs> I didn't bring it up. It. it was so funny to see like that switch. Like the like, oh, you're cool now. I'm going to talk to you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, and it's not like a fake thing. It's like, but you know, it, it's one of those things. It's like, man, it happens. It happens. Yeah, it happens. You know, and then when you guys all make it into the industry, like, just remember what it was like, that hustle. Just... Don't forget what that hustle was like. I mean, that's the only, I mean, like, that's, I, I, I'll try, but like, just don't forget what it was like to be like a hungry, like art student and that hustle. And uh, even when you're, you know, you're, you're famous and running your own show, but like, don't lose sight of that. 
kind of stuff because that's how the industry grows, right? Like just kind of like passing on that information. Um, what do you think, Angela? Should we go to Q and A or should we ask a few more questions? Up I to you. I want to ask. Yes, ma'am. I want to ask like two more things and then definitely go to Q and A because we got some really Do good it. questions in the Q and A. Thank you guys. Yeah, and for Do anybody it. who may not have heard earlier, if you have a question, put it in the Q and A so that we can answer it. Okay, so what? Okay, what was it like once you actually? had the internship. You know, we've talked a lot about like how to get in, how to get in. What goes on once you're actually in it? Like what are, and specifically, what are some things that y'all have done in your internship that have helped you so that A, in the case of like Joe and Gabe, they eventually led to full-time employment. In the case of Garnet and Kayla, it's going to lead to people going, hey, we remember you, you guys are great. Can I start on this one? Anybody okay. else want to take this one off? Go, man, go. <laughs> uh, be yourself. Be fun. Uh, I liked my team because they were the, the team I interned with was the team they brought me on full time after. And uh, the thing I think that helped me most when I got on the job is I was, I was like, all right, I'm in. Great. I'm going to do all this stuff at once. And I was like this little eager demon. And eventually, <laughs> my line producer vibe checked me one day. <laughs> Eager it was like her and my production soup sat me in a meeting. I was like, oh, all right, I'm getting fired. This is the <laughs> one. I had a good two weeks. This was good. I'm going to come back in later, but this was a good two, good two weeks. They told me, calm down. <laughs> we get you excited. We don't have a lot of work for you to do right now. So chill out. Go meet some people. Work on your artwork. But chill out. <laughs> Eager and I demon. think I taking that. that to heart is kind of what helped me the most because it's good. Like, especially what Bobby said, when you're in the industry, keep that hustle. Don't let it consume you. Hustle, <laughs> take care of your mental health, work on the other things you need to do because even when you're in, you're not done hustling. You're not done making connections. You're not done improving yourself. You're not done till you retire. When you retire, I don't care what you do. That's on <laughs> You can sit in a room all day and build Gundam model kits. That's what I'm doing with my retirement. <laughs> Yo, that's walk. very specific, uh, Gabe. It's very specific. Anytime. That's what I'm here I'm for. I'm going to piggyback off exactly what Gabe said because the exact same thing happened to me when I came on Casa. It was a super slow week, but I didn't know that. I just came off a different production that had been doing a lot of things. So I came in and I was like, you guys need help? You guys need to do this? Can I do this? And they're like, Garnet, go, go. Take a walk outside, meet some people, draw some, like, it's cool, you know? And, and it's so funny because I, like, a few weeks later, I got, my line producer hits me up on Slack and is like, hey, you free later? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, cool, we'll talk. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'm getting fired. Like, that was initially my first thought. I'm like, I don't know what I did. My brain's like, what did you even do? I'm like, I don't know. I just, that's it, it's the end for me. Um, and it's so funny because in that conversation, I actually did get offered a job. Wow. I couldn't take it yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. for reasons, but yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's so funny because like what Gabe said about like being yourself, being eager, but also like, you know, take the feedback. If they tell you to chill, you know, tell you to chill, <laughs> like just step back and do what you got to do. Um, I think that for me personally, something that really stuck, stuck out for them was that like, um, so, so this is an example of like a problem that I saw and then how I decided to take initiative and solve it. And they really, really liked that. And that's what they said to me. Um, the production was in a very, very busy time. And because of that, there wasn't that many like, like, a, like time for people to chill and meet and, and team morale is very important. You know, um, you know, being able to have fun, know your coworkers, it's part of the job. It's one of the reasons why people miss being in the studio, um, being able to see people, go up to someone's cubicle and, and talk. So I saw that there wasn't any of that. And I was like, dang, like, but I want to see people. Like, I want to know my team. So what I decided, so that, that was a point where I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to cry about it or am I going to do something about it? I did complain about it a little to myself, <laughs> but I did cry about it a little bit, you know? But after I cried about it and after I thought about it and I thought about what I wanted, I took the initiative to create 
events for the team. And it was a five week series. We met on Thursdays during lunch and it was just like, guys, come and have fun. We'll play Pictionary. We'll have a jam session. We had in like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Like trivia on Kahoot. And it was fun. And they really liked that. They liked that I took initiative um, with, with that and that I brought, and I played to my, knowing your strengths is so important. Everyone is going to be different, good at a different thing. Some people are good at communication. Some people are good at organization. Some people are good at just problem solving. If you know what your strength is, play to that. I know that I'm good with bringing people together, you know, creating that, those good vibes, those happy times. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna work that to my advantage. You know, internships is a lot of problem solving. And if you can show that you're willing to take initiative and, but then also that like, you can chill and vibe and be a person, you know, who can live their life. You know, if you can do both, you, can, you can't go wrong with that in, in any situation, in any studio, in any team. Really quick, uh, Garnet, I love that you brought that up too, because like as artists, like when you plan uh, events like that, artists are just kind of like, oh God, do we have to do this? But when they actually go to it, it's the greatest, like, like they're like, thank you for doing this. Yep. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like the greatest like team bonding moment because we're all like curmudgeon -y. But like when, when they actually get there, it's like the most memorable moment of like the year, you know? And they're, and they're like, Garnet, thank you, <laughs> you know, for doing this. Yeah. I was a little skeptical in the beginning, but <laughs> like, yo, it was nice to get out and um, like meet the team. Yeah, and like the attitude that I have was like, hey, listen, not everybody on the team is gonna come. Like people are still doing a job, but if four people come, yo, we're vibing with those four people. You know, we're going to make sure that those four people have a great time. It is going to be lit. And we're going to talk about it next week and it's going to be awesome. And, and you're absolutely right, though. Like, people do love being with people. And then everyone else is going to have FOMO uh, just from this. <laughs> everyone else is going to be like, dang, they look like they have that fun. I'll go next week. Yeah, that's the point. Exactly. <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. I forgot what the topic is, but anyone else want to sign in on that bit? <laughs> the topic was, to remind you guys, the topic was just the actual internship itself. Yes, ma'am. Like, yeah. what is what has made the actual yeah. internship itself like yeah. successful yeah. for you? Yeah. Uh, Kayla, do you want to do you want to share your thoughts? On I mean, that? I can't top what Garnett said. It's basically the same points that her and Gabe made. Um, I was very um, enthous enthusiastic about everything. Like, whatever the task was, no matter how tedious or small it was, I was like, "Give it to me. I'll do it." Um, and, and they seem to like that. I mean, it was, it was funny having our evaluations. They're like, okay, I walk in there ready to hear all like the criticism that I, I need to improve on. And the team's like, Kayla, honestly, there's nothing bad that we could say. We really want you to take the time to go and talk to some of the artists and do some midterm stuff for yourself because you're great. We couldn't think of anything bad for you to, to, to just work on. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> It was, a, it was a huge surprise, but yeah, I think it's just being enthusiastic about whatever tests they're giving. Never look down on anything that's given to you. Um, of course, being a team player and um, just having a good vibe with everyone, really. <laughs> awesome. And then, so Joe, like, um, how do you, I mean, like, you know, being a story artist, like, in, in the internship, I mean, like, how did you... How did you feel like, you know, you had to make your way or, you know, make your voice heard and like we talked about? Yeah, um, the way that uh, the story internship at Pixar was, it felt a lot more like like a like a course rather than being part of an actual production. Um, it was a thing where we were basically in a, in a class, like at Pixar the whole time and we were given an assignment every week and then at the end of the week we'd have to pitch to the entire story department which is a lot of fun. And I think professionally, that's just something that really prepares you for like the hustle and grind of being in a production and kind of like learning, like how to hit deadlines, right? Learning exactly what they look for in their story artists and like what their boards were. And for me, like the whole time, it was just all about learning to get along with people and kind of meet and kind of like get, get this, professional experience under your belt and kind of like grow throughout the whole process, I think. One thing that 
that I feel is that you have to be like willing to learn and like open to to being taught and just being a sponge, kind of like take in every little detail and like apply it in yourself and have that influence you as an artist and as a professional. Because at the end of the day, like this is a job that they hired you for, you know. Right, right. Can I piggyback on that? Yeah. <laughs> Because that is an amazing being a sponge. That's so good. And especially if you want to, if you're not sure where you want to be in animation, look at production. Because being in production, you get to see all walks of the show from development to the story, to the writing, to how the execs with meetings go. I mean, oh, wait, how the meetings with execs go. That wasn't even a sentence. (laughs) But yeah, you get to see it all. And it is amazing. Like the first two weeks I spent in the internship, I was just in the server going through everyone's art, silently judging some of them. <laughs> That's awesome. Like I'm going, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you next. <laughs> Gabe goes like ninja low key on the server. Uh, ninja hey, we all do. I, it, could, I could see who played Final oh, Fantasy yeah, VI yeah. by looking at the server no, art. No, definitely. Yeah, yeah. If you're on a show, like, see, no, that's a, that's actually a really good point. Like, here's the great thing when you're on a show because you can see everything. So you can look at the pitch bible. You can look at. You can watch every animatic. You can look at every board. You can look at every character design. Sometimes you can also look at tests, and so then you see like all of the tests, and you can start to pick out why they chose certain tests over other tests, and that can help you with future tests. So if you're on the show. Look at everything. Talk to everybody on your team. Yeah, man. Message them all. Just be like, hey, I can I ask you a couple questions? Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons why being on like a, a like a production intern or an inter in an internship in a place that allows you to have some production experience is so cool. Because like I haven't I've sat in on like network storyboard pitches, which has been awesome, you know, but I've also sat in on like writers rooms and I've also sat in and helped well not sat in, but like I've helped um like even the ability like there's something called like a storyboard reference that I have for a storyboard handout that I have to do which is basically just I go on the server and I get a bunch of re like I get a bunch of stuff that the storyboarder is eventually going to use that can use for reference when they're doing their boards that alone teaches me so much because I'm like oh my like look at like like these storyboarders aren't making everything from scratch, you know, like maybe they did at the beginning, but like when they have to pull out a certain pose, they're having this reference. They're using this reference. They're reusing props. Why are they reusing props? Oh yeah. Because if they have, if they can reuse an old prop, they don't, the character designer doesn't have to go and make a new prop and that saves money and that saves time. So the storyboarder can go and use, and I'm like, Oh, okay. I see how everything is fitting together. You know, I'm on production. I see what happens when one person is late with their stuff. It makes <laughs> you want to set something on fire, doesn't it? Makes you want to set something, or when someone didn't organize something correctly, and suddenly I'm like, where is the document? I, well, I want to change my statement. <laughs> Every artist should work in production, so you see how you affect everyone around you. Fact. Oh. Fact. No, yeah. that is a fact. Yes. You, when you work in production, it makes you a better artist mm-hmm. because suddenly you see exactly why hitting your storyboard deadline is very mm-hmm. important or why hitting your roughs or hitting your final isn't because if it's a butterfly effect. You're late. Production has to back up. Now they have to go talk to animatic. Animatic is like, oh, dang, now we got to push this back. People are in a rush. People have to work overtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It becomes... A headache. As Gay said, you want to set something on fire when something like that goes wrong, you know? So working in production absolutely helps you get better insight to what you want to do in the pipeline. But if you know you want to be an artist, it's still very helpful because it it, it helps you see your part in the bigger machine. It will also help you if you ever want to be an executive producer, because I know a lot of you out there want to be showrunners. So if you work in production, you will see how the show is run. And you will go to all of the meetings and you will see all of the departments and you'll have a much better understanding because you'll have both the art side, but also the business and communication side. So it all helps. For sure. Yeah. Um, I had a close friend uh, in uh, production at uh, on the Tangled series and like, 
just the stuff that she would vent to me about, like I would listen to it and just be like, oh, okay, I understand like what you're going through. And I'm gonna try to be, answer emails because artists never answer emails back for some weird reason. And then just let you know where I am in the schedule. You just have to be just kind of, you have to be communicative, even if it's bad news. I mean, like if you're an artist of you're like, oh yo, I'm not gonna make this deadline. They would rather hear that than nothing. You know what I mean? Because they don't know where to go. I mean, like, you know, and if they, if you can't meet a deadline, they can, they can kind of work around, make things happen, so. Um, the sooner the better. Sooner mm -hmm. the better, being very vocal about it. Um, and even if it's bad news. I mean, like, there's a lot of times where, like, as an artist, I'm like, ah, it's bad news. I'm probably not going to respond to this season. No, don't do that. Any news no. is good news. Good news is good news. Don't ghost your team. <laughs> do yes, not ghost your team. Don't, don't Please go. just tell them what's the going thing. on. Yeah. Even if it's just, like, a one-sentence thing, of, like, I don't think I'm going to make it. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know. Yeah, because it. then it's, know. like, Exactly. Then you can let the art director know. You can let the storyboard director know. Yeah. You can let the animatic editor. Then everybody knows, and so they're like, "Okay, we'll just kind of readjust other things that we're doing." So then nobody's end up being judging. Late. Yeah, nobody's oh. judging. It's like we know, you know, nobody. Yeah. Um, can I can uh, I say one thing? Go ahead, Dan. On the flip of that, I know. That, yeah, me and Garnet, we're saying this. We're going to be artists one day. We're going to be on the flip. We're going to be on a different panel being like, oh, there's proud people need to leave me alone. Yeah, yes, sir. No, 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 no. You know what? I, 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 will, I will preface that by saying. No, you know what, Gabe? I, I will contest you on that. Because you've been on the other side, you will 100% empathize with that. You, it, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You will never be like that ever in your artistic life because you had been on that side. You know, um, so... Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's just like being considerate, you know, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. just like, yeah. like the other people's time that because at the end, it's a pipeline, like what you do affects like people down the road and you have to keep yeah. that in mind, especially yeah, if you're people, you, Yeah, you have like, you have a responsibility for everyone, like in the pipeline down the road. So like, I mean, if you mess that up, then, um, uh, then you mess. <laughs> That's a lot of money, um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, I was just gonna ask, like Angela, do you wanna yeah. go on to the next question? Yeah, yeah, so this will be our last one before we hit the Q and A, so. so okay, this next one here. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So what are some things that you wish you knew before you started your internship that would have helped you out? Or things you wish you would have done while you were an intern. I wish I would have done more illegal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you just wish you had just led a life of crime. Okay. I'm like, not like a life of crime, but they were very, uh, there's one thing I like about DreamWorks is like, they're very cognizant of people's mental health. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of what they told me early on in the internship was like, hey, you're only working three days during this internship. And you clock out when you clock out. Don't feel the need to work after because you're excited about the position because you're going to burn yourself out. And if you burn yourself out, we can't, we, we can't really make this production work. At that same note, I, I kind of wish I would have logged in on my days off just to look at more art. I'm, I'm, but I was being a good boy and not doing that. I'm very <laughs> confused like where breaking the law comes in, but I like what you just said. Um, <laughs> Bobby's like, wait, wait, rise not an up, advocate for breaking crime? the law. Wait, what are not you doing? Breaking the law. Is it, is it, is it like, does, does Mom, do Monica and Trent and Frank know about is this? It, is it stealing, stealing uh, studio materials? Is that what the break Steal all the storyboards. Oh, no, 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 don't steal. <laughs> look at it. It's like a library. You can look at the book. Don't take the book home. Someone okay. else wants to read it. Like snoop around more, yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 I see what you mean. So the thing that you, do, you wish you'd done more is like snoop around more? Yeah. <laughs> Bobby, so, Bobby, so. I was trying to incriminate me on crimes. Like, so we need to steal show assets. Like, whoa, whoa, slow down. Like, I, oh, never I, I never said that. Never said. But I'm not. Bobby's like, we're all about to get fired. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Like, coming on Monday, they're like, so, so we watched your panel. We watched your panel on Saturday, Bobby. We have some I didn't questions. Steal anything. 
Never still. I wish I looked at more stuff. <laughs> the amount of things you could find on any show server is so vast. There's mm-hmm. no way you can cover it all in an internship, yeah. just given the time that you have and the amount of work that they give you to do. You can't cover it all. But, oh, there's so much good stuff there to learn from. It's like, have, it's, yeah. there's no really way I can describe it. Yeah. Imagine you've never read a book in your whole life, and then someone just drops you into this library, and you can just read and do stuff for all day, but at the same time, they want you to clean the library. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice but you wish you didn't have to clean the library you just get to keep reading they will ask you to clean the library sometime <laughs> amazing I will, I will say that a less, something that Gabe said about the idea of like listen you only get paid to work until 6 so don't work past 6 you know yep. and, that's, and that's something that for me I had to learn the hard way because again I was coming from a student background and for students <laughs> There is no distinguish between school and home mm-hmm. because they give you homework and it's like hours of homework. And then it's like, that's it. Your whole life is school, you know? But it, when, when I was working, it's like you leave your work at work and then you go enjoy your life. Mm-hmm. You do your job, you do what you gotta do, make sure everybody, you know, got the thing. And then you leave and you play Breath of the Wild for five hours. Like, that's it. No, just relax, you know? And I wish that I, wish that I had done that earlier because I did burn myself out like halfway. I was working really, really hard. And, and that did pay off in a certain, ex- to, a, to an extent, you know? I'm not saying don't work hard. Absolutely do. But time yourself, pace yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't do more unless you can actually exert that energy and then like not die. Because um, then what happened was that I was so burnt out that I couldn't do a lot of the things that I really wanted to do, like reach out to more people. You know, if it's one thing I wish I did more, it's reach out to more people, have more informationals, meet more people, hear their stories, their experiences. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be able to do that even when I'm done with the internship. But I'm kind of like, dang, if I wasn't so tired, (laughs) I could be doing so much more. It's because I didn't pace myself. You know, Mm -hmm. being chilling out is important. It's it's important. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, going off on that, I think it's very easy, especially like like what I said, um, coming off of like school where you have to be like on it all the time and hustling all the time. Yeah. But you got to keep in mind, like, this is also kind of a dream come true. And you have to enjoy it, like savor this, the experience, you know, yeah. like find the, the little happiness in moments and in, in, while being there kind of. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I remember I, when I was, during my internship, like I was just walking down the hall trying to do something, and then I noticed um, Pete Doctor kind of just like standing in front of a garbage can doing something, <laughs> and and I and I was just like, "What are you doing?" I, I came over to him. This was the first time I've ever met him, and it's like, "Oh, I'm trying to figure out this puzzle. Could you help me?" And for like a good um, fifteen minutes, we were just trying to figure out like this little paper puzzle based on Inside Out. And it's one of my favorite moments kind of thing. It's just, so like find like little treasure, like treasures and enjoy yourself kind of, yeah. you know? Correct. Correct. Like it doesn't have to be like hustle all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, 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 uh, my office mate used to always say, uh, whenever you're stressed out, Bobby, just think about, it. we're just making cartoons with our friends. Um, mm-hmm. that's exactly. all. That's, we're not we're not like uh, rockets we're not like in nurses or doctors and that kind of stuff and you know it's funny like we go home and we're, if we're dating a nurse we're like oh my god this uh, i couldn't make this design work and then <laughs> and then they're like really um yeah so i tended to like 17 patients with like all this kind of stuff and you're like oh maybe i'm more yeah. dramatic no, exactly. My brother's a nurse, and like it's that same thing where I would talk to him, like complaining about work, work, and he'd tell me, "Oh yeah, I had I had a patient die today." Like, oh yeah, perspective. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you're like, ah, you know? and you're like, ooh, I couldn't just make a transition from this one scene to another, and you're like, I'm okay. <laughs> um, how do you bounce back in that conversation? <laughs> I don't think you do. You know, I think you're just you like, like after that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get Stop. it. Okay. Uh, Kayla, <laughs> do you want to end it off? Okay, it's the same thing with all of you. Like um, coming in, I 
you know, you're so used to the school life and working in the special like in retail, you have to be always hustling. And especially when I was like on a really tight schedule, I came into the internship scared to make mm-hmm. any mistakes because mm-hmm. I knew like how much it would be affected if I messed up this thing. It's going to go down the production pipeline, but it's the same thing that you just said. They told me like, hey, well, don't worry. If you make a mistake, we're just making cartoons. You know, don't, don't stress over it. I still make mistakes here. I've been working here for 23 years. So just relax, breathe, relax do your good work. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll be just fine. It's just, it's an experience that you really want to enjoy and just try to absorb as much as you can and don't stress over it too much. That's awesome. And, uh, and that's a, so just to ahead, go ahead, like, that point about like, it's okay to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Another great lesson, like something mm-hmm. that my production coordinator did like in my second week, cause he could tell I was freaking out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I would, he, he could tell I was freaking out and I was like, he's like, Garnett, you need to be like, you need to chill out, man. He literally listed out at, like 10 different mistakes that he's made during his time here. Like he'd only been around for like a few months, like a, oh, I think it was like a month. And he had listed out every single mistake that he met, made. And he was like, and I still have a job. Oh. I'm fine. You will be fine. And I was like, I will be fine. You know, it's yeah. like, okay, 100%. thank you for that. That really helped me so much more than I think he realized because yeah. like, it's paralyzing. Because when you're in mm-hmm. school, you get penalized for mistakes, you know? Yeah. We, we're brought up in a system where any little mistake, it's like, mm, sorry, you're going from like great to like not so great. It's like, it's always penalizing mistakes. Mm-hmm. That's not how it works in a job. Like, obviously, like, don't go and like, you know, don't commit crimes. <laughs> don't, don't do anything don't, really Don't do bad. crimes. Crimes are bad. <laughs> don't do crimes. Yeah. You know, don't do crimes. But it's so much more, I guess the word is like forgiving. Yeah. Um, especially in the, again, if, we, if a doctor makes a mistake, if, if I'm getting surgery and a doctor says, uh-oh, I'm going to be like, no, uh-oh. Uh, you don't get yeah. to say, uh-oh. <laughs> what, what do you mean? But again, we're making, we're making, cartoons for kids like it's okay to make a mistake own up to it is an important lesson but you're gonna make them and that's okay awesome um that was the funniest thing midway through surgery you just hear whoopsie (laughs) like no (laughs) what do you mean oops oh i listen this this is an industry where you can make mistakes and it's not that bad but like yeah you didn't need that organ did you that's (laughs) fine it's it's extra organ yeah it's fine um (laughs) diana on the chat um, do you want to do you want to ask your question and come on if you're there? Hi, Dana. Hi. Hello. This was a mistake, right? <laughs> no, you have a lot of good questions. We want to hear them. <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'm Hannah. It's pop. I'm really going to laugh at all of you. And um, I don't remember what my questions were. Oh, oh if you go oh. to the Q&A. They're all in the Q&A. Use the Bobby They're method. Just there. start a sentence. Come out. Yeah. <laughs> I think I um joined and then everything got wiped out. But oh. uh, okay. Well, uh, you know I re- I do remember one of my questions that I can't find like um Nickelodeon internship on the website and somebody else told me that it's already ended. But then when I check on the website, it says um the deadline is August thirty something. So has it ended yet? Okay. So I can partially answer this because I work at Nickelodeon. So keep checking the website. So we have three, so Nickelodeon has spring, summer, fall internships. I believe right now they are currently looking at people for the fall, I think. I don't know for sure because I do not work in recruiting, but just keep checking the site. I can tell you that the trainee program has ended. Uh, If you go on LinkedIn and you look for you know, just type in Nickelodeon recruiting, Nickelodeon internships, you will find Amy, you will find our recruiters. You can always like find them on LinkedIn and just message them directly and just say, hi, I would love to apply for the internship. I was curious if you could tell me if it was going to be opening in the fall. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day. You know, feel free to message them. Hopefully they'll be able to get back to you if they're not super busy. If not, just keep checking the site because usually the internship, the next round of applications usually, I think, opens around like September. Yeah. So you may just be early. Okay. So I would just keep checking the site. And that actually goes for every studio. Just check every studio's website. 
go on LinkedIn and Instagram, check for all of the recruiters. You'll start to see information because different studios have openings at different times. And also COVID's kind of made it a little bit weird where some of them aren't having internships right now due to that, us trying to figure out when we're going to do studio reopens and that kind of thing. So just keep checking. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I am slowly remembering my questions. Um, uh, on the resume, should I put like um, skills before experience and then education? Mm -hmm. Or like experience is still the first? Mm -hmm. I want to say <clears throat> the way that I put my resume is that like I put the experience. Well, I have like my, my like, I guess like my personal statement, which is like, you know, a few sentences saying like who I am and like is a glimpse of that. And then immediately under, I have the experience. So the experience is kind of the first thing, but on the side, I have like a little bar where I list my skills. So they're kind of both on the same level. One's just kind of on the side, you know? So it's like um, a good rule of thumb that actually Amy said to us is that like, if you want to test and see what people are looking at first in your resume, give your resume to somebody, a friend, a person who doesn't like you, you know, a professional, whatever, ask them to look at it for six seconds, put the resume away, and then reiterate what they remember or what they saw. If they saw what you want them to saw, which to saw, to see, to, um, like it's your experience, what you do, you know you did it right. You know you put everything in the right place. But if they see like, oh, again, like what I said earlier, they see like where you went to school and the fact that you like plants, but that's not what you want to do. You know, you have six seconds. Like you don't have a lot of like real estate time. You want it. So it, that's a good way to check it um, with other people. Um, I would say experience goes on the top, but you can look at different like portfolio, not portfolio, resume templates and like play around with that. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of that stuff online. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Diana. Yes, thank you. Unless any, do you guys have any other like thing to add on? I agree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, sorry, I'll lead with experience. Yeah. Lead yeah. Your transferable skills and what you've worked at is going to be more informative than your skills. If that sounds mean, it sounds mean, <laughs> to say, but like your skills are like on the side footnote. That's cool. I need to know like what you've done, how can I get you in here? And then education, I guess. I don't know about education. education. A lot of people I know who are above Depends me didn't go to college. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for, for internships, you need education listed, but I wouldn't put that first. I would put experience first. For the majority of animation internships, the reason why you want to make sure you list education is most of the time you have to be in school or you have to have graduated within six months to a year. So it is important to list your education so that you're eligible for the internships. That's different for trainee programs. A lot of trainee programs, they don't care if you ever went to school. But for internships, you do want to make sure you list that. But again, put that last, what you've done, your work experience, how you would help out the team, that's, that needs to go first. And you don't need to get complicated with the education. I, on my resume, I literally just have where I went to school, what degree I got, boom, that's mm -hmm. it. You can put anything else. Like if you have like a class, like maybe me, let's just say you don't have that much experience, you know, especially if like people are students, you can put a relevant class. You can put like, oh, I want to be a character designer and I took this character design class. So like, you know, stuff like that. That's the only thing that I would include in terms of like spicing up your education. But even that's not, you know, again, transferable skills mm -hmm. is what they want to see. Mm -hmm. And even if you haven't worked a job, but you've like done a student film, something like that, that's fine. Put that as experience. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't like done any of that stuff, go live life more. <laughs> Do the things. Uh, Gabe, I'm glad you're here. Um, so uh, <laughs> the uh, young, her, thank you, Diana. We appreciate mm -hmm. you. Good to see you. What is that thing at the bottom? Anyway, that's a long term. Um, Young, um, if you're here, do you want to ask your question? Hi, hey, what's up, man? Hey, doing good. 
Um, so yeah, um, my question is pretty straightforward. So um, as I'm looking for a production internships, my goal is to be a storyboard artist. And I was wondering if, I know Angela mentioned this a bit earlier, but like if you label, label yourself as a story artist or a character designer, and then you're applying for production, is that kind of like a yellow flag? Like, um, or is it better just to list your name if it's production only? And it, it, it does depend on the culture. So I, I know Nick is a lot more open, but when you first meet them, like if you come out of the blue to stew, you never met any recruiters yet, like in person. So how would you best approach that and like compete with all the other applications, you know? I can talk about that a little bit because I think that's was one of the biggest concerns I also had when I was applying. Um, as far as like the resume itself, I believe I just did the name. I didn't put um, illustrator or designer as I normally would because they're, they're mostly looking for that production side of things, but it's okay to list any anything that is related to that. And the, the reason it is is because Nick is very open to, um, you know, as you were saying, to artistic opportunities for yourself. It was in the interview itself that it came up like, well, what are your like, your aspirations in the future if you were to get into the the industry and I did mention like I do have uh, wants to get into like viz dev or character design but I'm here right now I really want to learn about production because I know how important it is in in the pipeline and creating um, you know a cart a successful cartoon show and when I did say that they did mention they really appreciate hearing that because it is such a vital part of this this whole industry um, so just, it's okay to, to state it out there, but definitely if you're doing production, you want to make sure that's the, the forefront, that you're open to this, that you're not just going to like jump the gun on someone. Uh, yeah, thanks. And I think another brief thing I thought about is just, um, you know, I guess as you kind of like apply to lots of studios and like, kind of like know the, the game, I guess, like to make sure your resume stands out and gain help from people. Um, well, just a bit of background, I do work for Agents in Animation, which is kind of a newer group, but like we're, I'm a community coordinator. I got to meet with like Amy Wu and she's great. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like one of the best things you can do. Um, but I would say like, if you want to go something more like higher, like you don't know, like for example, I applied for Disney television animation. Mm -hmm. Like that's a bit more like they require more, like you already need an internship from somewhere else. Like they have more qualifications. So I would say like, I know like you have to start little by little, um, grow your experience. Um, but like, how's like everyone's story from like knowing, not knowing anyone and like, is it more the connections that have really gotten you to where you are? So for me, it has been, but it's a big, it's a bit of a mix for me. You have to be open to not just only going to, you know, art, artistic panels and all that. Um, just be open to just meeting people in general. Me being an introvert, sometimes there's days I'm like, do I really want to talk to people today? Ooh, do I really want to go to this event? But you kind of like limit yourself to opportunities of meeting people that, you know, you never know or connected to this person or that person. And that's really what happened to me. I went to a party and there was just some person that happened to work in there and we had a conversation. I didn't expect anything out of it, but it just led to, hey, you know, I know this person. You should just send them an email and chit chat. And say you don't know someone at a party or an event or whatnot. You can go on places like LinkedIn and Instagram and all those, those panels, especially when the recruiters are very open, like, hey, you can always, you know, email us here and there. And then you can set up just a little question here or there about start to make that connection with them and build that relationship. That's what I did. So I don't know if anyone, if anyone else has like better idea of how they did it themselves. Can, can I just hear the question again, just so I, I know exactly what you're, just to be clear on what you're asking? Yeah, sorry. Um, I would say basically in a, nut, in a nutshell, like, would you say it's more the connections that have really gotten you to like be seen more, like in, reaching out to people? Um, and like, I guess, how do you get to that process where you like, you can kind of get that connection versus just like applying just to a major studio, just cold, like you're, you don't know any recruiters. And um, I kind of feel like it's very case by case how interns get hired, you know? Yeah, um, and 
Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Cause I was about to say that like it is, and I don't think this is just for interns. I mean, I mean, again, I, I just started, but I feel like the people who've been working here for a while can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Everyone's journey in the industry is very personal. Everyone has their own story. Everyone has their own steps. There is no exact formula. We all got here via an internship, but there are tons of people who work in the intern industry who did not have an internship, you know, like, it happens. Um, there are people who applied stone cold and they got in and there are people who knew people, uh, other people. Um, again, like the reason why networking helps is because it, it's always going to be easier to trust someone that you've met and talked to than someone that you've never met before. You know, that being said, how you meet people, Again, I'm an extrovert, so I kind of just walk up to people and talk to them. <laughs> like, most of the people that I've met is just being like, hi, I'm Renette. Like, I love your art. And they're being like, oh, thank you. Um, and then we start talking about, like, Haikyuu or something. I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's just a bunch of professional nerds. But um, everyone's going to have their own, their own method. Everyone's going to have their own path. Especially because, like, again, uh, I think, I forget, I don't know if it was, like, Angela or Bobby who said it, where it's like, sometimes, you know, you got to pay rent. You know, sometimes you just got to take the job and it's like, you want to work in a dream job too, but sometimes, you know, there's other factors like mental health where like, do you have family to support? Like, where are you in life right now? Like, it's going to be real hard for you to, to pull a game and reach out to like 20 people a day. If you're going through like a serious like life crisis in the moment, it's like have mercy on yourself and, and chill. Um, but you know, reaching out to people, it's a leap of faith but also know that everyone does have their own journey. There is no exact formula. And that's kind of the cool thing. You know, you can, you can find your own way. Exactly. You got to play to your strengths mm -hmm. and whatever road or path you decide to take, know that the progress you make towards it, whether that be reaching out to people or just polishing your social media so that you look amazing, whatever path that you pick, take, stay consistent with it and know that each day you're doing something is a day you're moving forward and not a day where you're remaining stagnant. So if you want to try reaching out to people, test it out, test the water, see how it makes you feel. And if that's not what's doing it for you, find another route. There's a million different routes. You heard four different stories, but there are millions of others about how people got into animation. I would yeah. like to add, oh, um, go for it. Sorry, um, I was just gonna say, coming from an introvert's point of view, who is like just generally nervous when it comes to like talking to people, let your work speak for yourself, you know? Like, um, like, like yeah, like, like basically like hone your skills to where they can't be ignored anymore, you know? And they will come to you. And, but yeah. I wanna add on to what Joe just said, cause that is so true. And that works for both introverts and extroverts. Myself and many people I know, a big reason why we got hired was we made a thing and then people came to us because of the things that we made. So I have friends that they exhibited at conventions, you know, and you can do this online, you know, you can exhibit online now, you can exhibit in person when it's safe to do so. I know people that made web comics, people that made short films and entered them in film festivals. I made a podcast. Like if you make things that people enjoy or that are helping other people, that is a good way to get noticed because your work is speaking for yourself and you're also speaking for your work and you're actually doing the job already. And so then people know, well, we know you can do the job because you made a film. So obviously you can work on a show because you know how to do these things. So that's another way that you can network is by making something that people then notice and they want you to make something similar for them. But again, million different ways to get in right awesome thank Great. you um, thank you all yeah yeah no awesome. yeah um delilah has a very like a very pragmatic and also very important question delilah are you there i'm like a radio dj i don't why am i talking like this um you should I, always talk uh, like this <laughs> oh uh you're, oh, you're on you're on mute Hi. Hi. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yep. Always having technical problems before I even begin. No, it's okay. Us too. <laughs> Us too. 
Okay, so I did ask a question. I actually have two questions, but I'll ask the one that I had before. Um, how should you actually dress for an interview, even if it's a virtual one? Because people always talk about wearing, you know, business suits and whatnot, and you want to dress for the job you want, not the job you have. But it's like, this is a different, you know, a different environment. It's art, so people dress casually usually in the job, but how would you dress for the actual interview before you potentially get the job? So funny, because we were just talking about this yesterday and they specifically, <laughs> said, they specifically said, like, you don't need to come in a suit. Like, it's not that deep, guys. <laughs> don't come in a suit. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, again, I've only, I, I think that, you know, people who are more experienced can probably answer this question better than I can. But I'm just reiterating what they said yesterday that like, dress nicely. But you don't have to come in a pencil suit. You don't have to come in a three-piece suit. Like, this is not corporate America. Like, you're not going to a law for firm. You can, I'm wearing a dress. This is an Avatar The Last Airbender, like, shirt and <laughs> jeans and some sneakers. And I'm good, you know? Because this is probably something I'd wear to the office. Um, obviously, you don't come in, like, you know, sweatpants and a 10-year-old t-shirt. You know, like, you do want to... <laughs> It is an interview. You want to appear nice, but you, do, you don't have to come in like your Sunday best, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, my rule of thumb with interviews is um, just try to figure out like what, what everybody's everyday wear is at the job that you're applying for, and then dress like that, but slightly elevated, you know? <laughs> okay. nice That's so shirt, smart. You know? yeah, That's so smart. One step up. Yeah. And the nice thing is for us, it's like you're a step up from hoodie for most people. <laughs> yeah, literally. So, yeah. on, literally. Exactly. If you wear, <laughs> from seeing all the folks that we've interviewed on in our show, if you wear a button up shirt or if you wear a nice sweater and if you just have nice clean pants or clean skirt or clean dress, that's pretty much it. You will look nicer than 90% of the people around you. And then when you leave, they'll go, wow, they were dressed really well. Yeah. And then we'll look at ourselves and go, we need to do better. We kind of look like slobs in the interview. What is the so. shirt with the buttons? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big draw. Ooh, so nice. yeah, like Step you- Step up from a zipper. <laughs> yeah, per, yes, exactly. Exactly. Oh God, Kayla, I don't know if Amy ever told you this, but apparently like when they're in the, when we're, when we're all in the studio, interns always get commented on how we dress better than everybody oh, else. Cause you guys look great. We know you're the interns. Cause like, wow, that's a snazzy dresser. Cause you look at the rest of us and we're just kind of like, what happened? You know? <laughs> it's super easy to spot. Yeah. <laughs> spot. Yeah. yeah. Why isn't Gabe wearing pants right now? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I could just tell. I could just tell the reflection of the wall, your back wall. Like, there's no pants. There's no pants back there. My legs that reflective? <laughs> all right, I didn't know the boy was that glistening today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Sorry, Delata. We went no, oh, no, we we, no we, we, we would no also. No, that's a great <laughs> question though. That is that yeah, is a very, very good, good question. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And um, my other question was actually about resumes themselves. Um, I've heard of the ATS system, like uh, the, I think it's called the applicant tracking system, where it's like this automatic system that you put your resume through and it scans for all the words that pretty much match up what the job posting was so that they pick you out of a stack. But it's like, I don't know if that also works with any animation jobs like if you have to optimize your resume for that type of system especially the layout that's a, I, you know what that is an excellent question i actually don't know my guess is that i do know they the probably oh you you know the answer go for thank it. you garner that's great. i was legit about to say i submitted it yeah, yeah, tell us, I, have, I have no idea if that's the answer weird. at least and again it varies from studio to studio but the answer is yes keywords are crucial. If the job description calls for you to know Storyboard Pro and you know Storyboard Pro, make sure Storyboard Pro is in your resume. Pretend they're gonna command F it. Like, <laughs> literally it. Um, and, and that's kind of something else that was said that like, you want, you want your resume to look nice, 
but don't make it, don't use the craziest, weirdest font and like the wackiest, like, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, like setting of the page, because then it's, it might not go through the processor. Um, you know, the pro it's, it's an AI. They got to, you know, so make sure you're using, you know, a nice font, a legible font, make sure everything is clear, but keywords are so crucial. Um, obviously, don't copy and paste the job description, but look for the hot words. If they're emphasizing organization, you better make sure that the word organization is on your resume. If they're emphasizing communication skills, but make sure communication skills are on your resume. Keywords are so important because they ab absolutely do. And that's part of the reason why it's so important to be clear about what you want to do. Because they're, when they're looking for character designers, they're going to put in character designer and all the character designers are going to come up. And if you don't have character designer in your resume, you, you didn't pass the command F. Like, it's just, it just you didn't go through. Um, so, yes, absolutely. And again, this varies from studio to studio. I know for certain at Nick, it's a thing. Um, I wouldn't be, and again, it's because there's thousands of applications to look through. Thousands. You, like the, the myth that you're, the, 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 um, the recruitment team is going to look at every single resume is a lie because they're human. They just cannot do that. Um, so definitely put some keywords in there because it's a thing. Additional forewarning going off of that. I did remember, I think it was from a talk last week we, we had together. They warned about for the artist, don't put any, like, I know it's tempting and it looks beautiful, but don't put your artwork on the resume because the system cannot read it very well and they struggle to open the document. And if they struggle, that's it. They're nope. just going to push it away. That's, so that's, try to avoid that, please. That's, that's <laughs> you need to make pragmatic it, and legit advice. Yeah. You need to, like, make it as easy as possible for them to find it. Because like Angela said, it's like finding a needle in a stack of needles. Mm -hmm. it's a, there's, a lot, there's just yeah. a lot of those needles. So the, the stronger your needle is to come up with the magnet, the better you have a shot, you know? Cause they're not, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, I mean, like, again, if like, there might be certain words like, hey, do, do you know about that person's resume? Is it, is it in there? But like, <laughs> if, it's, if it's difficult to read or if it's just not coming up, they're gonna move on to the person who had the clear resume. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you want to give yourself every shot of, of coming up. So, yes. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up. Because Thank you. There's never a clear answer to that, but thank you for a clear answer. Yeah, just, just, it's better to be safe than sorry. You know, make it clear, mm -hmm. but also it, it helps a lot. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Delilah. Thanks for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Kayla Garnett, uh, thanks for thanks for hooking that up. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's actually great because I had no idea. Like I just assumed maybe, but <laughs> that is I need to take this class that you and Kayla went to so I can tell <laughs> the rest of the mentees because everything you said is like, well, Amy said this. I'm like, Amy. Amy got, got all the knowledge. Uh, Monday, Monday, Monday morning. morning. Yeah, Monday morning. Because, and know. I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna lay like a real 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 statistics. For the spring and for the spring and fall semester and Nickelodeon. 5,000 applications for the internship. And only 16, 16 of us got chosen for the spring. For the summer, over 20,000. Oh, yeah. And only, what was the number, Kayla? Was it like, it was 31? Third, 20, yeah, 30, it was 29 yeah, and then they added two more. 31. Yeah, and then they added some, yeah. yeah. So like, the, <laughs> the odds are not in our favor. <laughs> like in terms of the percentage it's so you again you want to give yourself every chance you can of getting picked up by that magnet which is why you you try so hard to know all of this information because it's a lot the recruitment team ain't reading 2000 resumes they're not doing it they're human yeah yeah can I add on to that real quick because that's always something that concerned me when we start getting into these applications and you see the pool yeah, it's, it's 5,000 to 20,000 people, but I know you can't actually, but pretend, look to your left, look to your right. That person is not your competition. That person is there to help you. Yes, you're both going for the same position. Don't get cutthroat with it. Please don't. Everyone's here to uplift. Everyone's here to help. Some people are ready at different stages, and that's fine. It's fine. Not everyone needs to like rush in, but just like work with the people around you, and you'll be great. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great, Gabe. I mean, like, I, yeah, especially nowadays where it's just kind of, you kind of like, that's all you're thinking about. It's just kind of like, 
I I was listening to a podcast with like um like another filmmaker was just kind of thinking like their success is my failure. And that that was just like a, a toxic um just kind of like mentality. And I felt that like I still feel that sometimes, but I felt that like all throughout my career, you know. Um and um yeah, I think there's enough there's enough room for all of us. <clears throat> And uh, we can all make it without being, um, uh, you know, just sort of like crushed at the crushed at the uh, success of another person. So, um, but yeah, I, I definitely been through that before. Sorry, go ahead. All right, I was just since you're bringing that up, that is another thing I do want to say because it is so important. Amy brings it up a lot. Don't be a jerk in this industry. It is such a small industry. Everybody knows everybody. And if you're gonna be someone who's irritable or someone who doesn't, you don't wanna work with, the word's gonna get around. And you should really <clears throat> look to the people the next to you that your, your colleagues, the students that you go to school with, those are the people that you're gonna go into the industry with. They're either, they're either gonna work for you or you're gonna work 100%. for them. So you wanna really be careful about what you <laughs> say and do and you really wanna build those positive relationships because if word gets out that you are a jerk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> they're they're not going to hire you. I mean, I'm I'm glad that you brought that up, Kayla. Like, I <clears throat> I can't stress enough of just kind of like the like the uh, like how people kind of like work with you and just sort of like your reputation of like being someone to work with, whether it's good or not. Mm -hmm. And um, in animation, I think like everybody knows everybody, you know, so like, I think that's super important just to be just to, I mean, you don't, I mean, like, I, I feel like all of us on this panel and everyone on the on the chat is like, they're generally nice people like you don't have to um, push yourself up to push anyone down. Right. Um. so just kind of be that that cool person that's cool to work with. And again, I mean, you know, we're all kind of like in it together and, you know, we all want to support each other, especially, um, I will say, you know, just because this is Rise Up Animation, uh, I'm just kind of like diverse and inclusive voices, right? So like any time <clears throat> someone is pitching something or comes to you with an idea or anything like that, that is something that unlike you've ever seen in, in animation and TV and all that kind of stuff, like do everything you can do to support them. You know, um, and I need that support <laughs> too. Uh, but uh, you know, I mean, just like cultivate a space where you, where we can have like more diverse and inclusive voices, more stories being told, other than every anything that we'd seen before. Um, so, um, and then uh, sorry, go ahead, Angela. Is there one more thing you wanted to ask, or you want to go to Leanne's? Uh, I want to go to Lee. I just Leanne. I agree with I agree with what everybody said. I agree with everybody said, and I can reiterate because people talk in good ways and bad. And I have seen this in action. I have heard these yeah. stories directly of people not getting jobs because producer director says, "Hey, what about this person?" And people come out of the woodwork going, "No." <laughs> I once worked with this person. Here's what they did. It was a bad experience. And they're like, whoa, okay. How about this person? They're wonderful. They help everyone. Great. It's real. So be kind and be cool and you won't have to worry about it. So I, I, I got to say about that. I think that a lot of that has to do also with like the way that you resolve conflict, the way that you resolve, mm -hmm. that you take feedback, the way that you deal with the negative, because the truth is that you, you're not going to be friends with everyone and you're not going to be best friends with everyone, but you can still work with people and be respectful. You know, mm -hmm. you can disagree with a person, you can deal with a difficult coworker or a difficult boss and still be respectful about it and you'll go to the next job and hopefully there'll be better people there you know mm -hmm. but if you're a jerk if you're if you look at conflict like that's not my job or like you take feedback and it's like mm, i don't think you're right or like no i'm still gonna do it my way it's like that's a whole different attitude nobody wants to work with that attitude period i tell a quick story i've had that happen five times <laughs> Since I, since I became full-time at DreamWorks, five times people have reached out to me, asked me to look at their resume, 
resumes and other portfolios and I give feedback. They're like, well, maybe you just don't understand. I was like, all right. Ooh. I'm yeah, done with this yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, yeah. do that. don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Here's what you say if you don't agree. Thank you very much for your time. Yes. I appreciate your feedback. That's it. That's all you have to say. And then you never have to talk to them again. If you don't agree, that's all you need to say. Don't do what don't do what those people did the game. Because then you're on like, no, don't do that's that. That's it. You that burned the bridge. I was on my lunch yeah. break. I didn't have to have this conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could have ate my chicken nuggets. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You, you, you don't want to be like, I am an artiste and you're not seeing my vision. It's like, oh, don't, don't be that, that don't. person, please. Um, so really quickly, um, so Leanne, do you want us to yes. sit on your um, question or do you want to ask it? Or yes, no. Saw a thing in the chat. Um, you said, hey, can, can you skip, skip my questions? Uh, just skip. Okay, um, cool. Uh, so we can close out with Sage, um, just to respect your guys' times. Oh. Sage, what up? Are you there? Yes? No? Sage? Hi. Hello. Hey. Hi. Um, so I just kind of wanted to ask, being on the other side of everything, that if there's something that maybe an intern or somebody who's a prospective intern had forgotten to ask, what would be one of the most important things that you would want them to know before they switch over to that uh, to the other side? When you say the other side, like the other side of? Like going from being um, a prospective person to being like actually in the industry itself. Oh, oh, I see. I guess... I think that, I think that's something that I wish, I learned this in the middle of my internship, but it's something that I wish I could tell everybody that it's like, because again, the, the, the all-knowing Amy, <laughs> that's like just the fountain of, of knowledge for us, you know, um, something that she said to me when I was, when I was freaking out over like new production, different people didn't know how I was doing, ah, she was like, you need to know your needs, you know? You need to know your needs and you need to know your wants. You need to know what you want out of a career, what kind of people you want to work with, what's the environment you want to be in. And then on the flip side, you have to know what you don't want. You know, for me, she, you know, she blatantly told me, she's like, Garnet, you are a person who values quality time and people interaction. And being on Zoom is hard because you don't get to see people a lot. And that works for some people. That's, that, that, that's fine. But for me, it was not it wasn't working or, you know, it, it wasn't working. Yeah. You know, I had to get creative about it. So I think that being honest with yourself about what you want out of a career, um, where you are as a person, what your strengths are, what your not strengths are, um, is just something to really be honest with yourself about, um, which I, I think that's going to be probably like the biggest lesson that you take away. Like, and, and I think that the more, you know, that, then when you go into the internship, I think you'll like, I guess like you'll, like you'll make less mistakes um, or you'll be wiser about the decisions you make, you know? You'll be wiser about not burning yourself out or wiser about like how you interact with that person or wiser about like why that bothered you specifically, even though everybody else kind of seemed fine. It's like, what, a, what, about, what about me? Um, knowing yourself is very important um both on a personal level and then what you want out of the internship and out of your career mm -hmm. okay yeah and um for me adding on to that um i would say don't be so hard on yourself you know like um have fun and just be genuine like it's a job but it's also you're, you're an intern you're, you're learning like be open to learning and like make genuine connections you know that that's kind of like what i what i wish i would have known more mm. right now gabe what do you think i mean to piggyback what off they're saying like off of what they're saying yeah that uh you have to be able to have set up boundaries you have to be able to set up your own boundaries because if you don't people will become accustomed to pushing that boundary 
And if I mean, that's not like, authentic to the real you and the work you can handle, it's going to hurt everyone, everyone after that. And, and one note I could just say for anyone, yeah, it's great to be out there and be outgoing, but you have to be you at the end of the day because they're hiring you for you. And if you're acting or you're trying to be more than what you can actually be, it's going to wane on you so much, so much. You need to be authentic to yourself so that the authentic you can push you forward in your career. That's what's going to help you the most. Can you go into a little bit about like, <clears throat> sorry, like boundaries? Like, what do you mean? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, everyone has something similar to this where you have like your set work for the day, but someone has an issue and they're like, Hey, can you help me out with this? More than not, more than likely you'd be like, yeah, of course I'll help you out with this. Don't let that get to a point where you're now doing that person's job. Mm -hmm. If you're being asked consistently to do overtime for things that like either aren't in your dis job description or weren't a direct response of something that reflects on your work, Mm -hmm. You probably don't need to take that overtime. And if they want to give you the workload of a position that is above what you're working at and you're not going to get compensated for that, be, like, don't be afraid to ask for that compensation. Be like, hey, I'm doing all this work. I'm filling out this position. I want to make this very clear. This is not specific to me. If <laughs> <can't see> <laughs> I'm good. I'm ready right now. <laughs> we're like we're set. You and me, like this. But you uh, hysterically is that the right uh, uh, um, uh, reaction to that thing? Yeah, but yeah, great. But uh, yeah, if if you're in these if you're in these situations and you see things starting to go south for you, never be afraid to reach out. Never be afraid to talk. Tell them, hey, this might be too much at this time, and you get personal days. Take a personal day if you need it. That's one thing one of my bosses, like my PC, the last three weeks, because we've been through a, like a rough patch in the show, he said like, hey, you're doing good work. I've noticed your mistakes are starting to increase and you started this job at an inopportune time. Take a personal day. I need you to take a personal day so you can come back and be better. I think, I think boundaries, oh, finish. <laughs> Oh, no, I was just looking at Bobby and Angela's face, and I feel like I said something wrong. No, nope, I didn't say anything <laughs> wrong. Come Sorry for in. making a weird face. I'm trying to type in answers to some of the questions because I know we're not going to be able to get to everybody. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, no, no. Oops. You're not, no, your, your, answer, like, your answer was great. Messed up. No, your answer was great. No, but no Gabe, worries. what Gabe said about, again, those boundaries, like, that applies like the personal day is, is and I and I cannot emphasize it enough because it's one of the biggest lessons that I learned like the importance of taking care of yourself the important like you cannot give your team a hundred percent if you're running on empty your mistakes are going to increase you might get more irritable like you might start freaking out in places where like you'd normally be like really calm and that's not like a that it's not anything on you. It's just that like, we're meant to rest. We're meant to recalibrate and whatnot. So it's a very important. And so knowing when you have to say, no, I, I can't do that. You know, no, I can't work on that day because that's my day to relax. And I know that if I work on that day and then I come back and work an entirely new week, I'm going to die. <laughs> like you have to have, that's a boundary. You know, that's, it's all included in the boundaries. You know, what Gabe said was so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Kayla? All the things that you said are great. <laughs> but I don't know if it answers your question, but for me is like, it was learning and then unlearning bad habits coming into the job. Um, hmm. Like what? Because of school and, you know, and job, you get so set. I'm like, you always have to be hustling. You always have to be doing something for the job. If you're in any kind of like downtime or relaxing, that makes you a bad employee beginning of this internship that's the thoughts that I had I was so worried about you know constantly working and keeping up with the team's tasks and it took a while for for me to learn like you know it's okay to have some downtime it's okay to ask for yeah, help 
and, yeah, and they told me straight away they told me Kayla it's okay you don't need to constantly yeah. thinking, like take advantage of, of those times that you can just breathe and mm -hmm. you know take a take a breath so yeah. it's also it's just been a discovery of just learning things about myself along the way I haven't learned everything but as far as that that's that's what I got there's a lot of unlearning of the school mentality. <laughs> There's so much of that. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'd, I'd add on one point to that. If you don't get an internship while you're in school, it's no big deal. Yeah. If you graduate, okay. you still haven't got an internship, no big deal. Like Angela said, we got six months to a year after you graduate to get an internship or you could do a training program whenever. But when you graduate and you don't have like a job, if you have the ability to, take a month or two off, decompress from school life. School life is not real life. And if your college was like my college, they work you crazy like a dog. And it's just not great. You can work and you can grind and you can push all that stuff out. But if what you're pushing out isn't like high quality, you've done all this work for nothing. And that you push yourself so hard, you can get depressed. That's something a lot of graduates face. It's something I faced. I was mad depressed after graduating. I wish I took those couple months off instead of just throwing myself into work or doing all of these other things just to try my best to work into the industry. If I could go back and I could do it all again, I would legit, as soon as I graduate, I would just like take a month off, make a comic, eat some pineapples on the beach. <laughs> okay, um, if you don't mind me asking, like, how did you, because I know that's a lot of us, um, you know, facing that kind of like, um, you know, mental health stuff and, and just kind of anxiety. Like, how did you, how did you navigate that? Not, I, I don't want to say overcome it, but like, how did you navigate it? Oh, I navigated it because, well, it was, it's a lot. It was a lot going on, mainly because um, I, it felt like, it felt like I was getting it on all sides after I graduated. Like, I graduated. Off sides? All sides. Oh, all sides. Uh -huh. Yeah. So right. I graduated recruitment from like graduation or like people from my college were like, hey, good job graduating. I was like, awesome. Are you going to help me get a job? They're like, we'll see you later. But they would check it every month or so. Be like, hey, you got a job yet? I was like, no, not yet. And it was like that constant reminder from them. And then my family was also very proud of me for graduating. We're at the same time being like, all right, what are you going to do? What's going on? Yo, I felt that. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was not. <laughs> it wasn't I, felt great. That. I think <laughs> everyone feels that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it yeah. Uh, it took um, it was uh one of my, it was one of my big motivators in life, and um, uh, my uh, stepdad. He sat me down. He talked to me. I was like, dude, you're fine. You did great. Calm down. Relax for a little bit. And then uh, my my sister in law was like. She was, she's the one who put me onto the LinkedIn game. And from there, it was zero stress. She's like, yeah, you're going to reach out to people. You don't have to have the perfect job after you graduate. Send a message here. It's very low investment for you. You typed out a paragraph and you sent that to people. And whatever they send back, that's a person you've never met before, who you may never see again. So it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It was just a lot of, it was those people who sat me down were just like, it's okay. It's fine. You're fine. And then the internal battle in myself was, I'm not going to lie. There was like a week or two. I didn't want to look at my diploma because it looked like a failure. It was just like a reminder. I graduated, but I still wasn't successful. And it took that kind of time to sit down and be like, all right, I'm fine. I'm okay. It's cool. And then at the same time being like, got time i can work a job make some money have some fun on the weekends with my friends gabe i think you cut out sorry oh sorry come back come close yeah put the mic back sorry the last two i'm close what's going on last two sentences again yeah where did where did i cut out at or or just last two sentences wait say that again oh it was really just like the last two sentences. Uh, I'll, I'll start at the <laughs> oh, last yeah, part. Sorry, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard, um, you, um, with your family and that kind of stuff, do you want to talk about your family and kind of your, their support 
for you and that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, they they were very they're very supportive, but half half immigrant household, half uh, uh, American household. There's a lot of uh, expectations from you, yeah. and they want you to do a no. lot. And it's like the, a lot of the love they would give is great, and that support was awesome. But it was also coupled with the expectations, and some of those expectations you put that on yourself. Mm. And at the end of the day, you have to realize, yeah, your family's going to be like, oh, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. But I'm like, man, <laughs> I could be on trial for theft tomorrow. Y'all would still love me. Uh -huh. I don't care. Doing <laughs> actual crime. <laughs> <laughs> That's the theme of the episode. That's what the YouTube tagline needs to be. Yeah. Our crime. Yo, so were they, were they animation. Were they supportive, uh, Gabe, of like this art animation? Not at first. Mm -hmm. After I graduated, everyone was really supportive. Uh, after I got the internship, more people were more supportive. Mm -hmm. It's if you have those few members of the family who are supportive of you at the beginning when you're just like getting started. Like I remember the conversation I sat down with, uh, with like uh, my dad and I told my mom, I was like, hey, engineering's great. <laughs> Gonna go try out this animation thing. And then I tried it out at community college, performed well at my classes there. Uh, then I went on to uh, SCAD to continue my education there, had more success there. And each time I was more successful, more people of my family came on board to the idea and then there was more support and then there's more people who were like saying mad stuff to me before who are now just like, hey, I'm sorry I said that. Because usually when they say stuff like that, it's because they worry about your future aspects because yeah. there's so much stigma around the idea of a starving artist. Yeah. And I don't know if I can't say this. Animation pays lovely. Pays lovely. It, it pays great. Actually, yeah. I want to I want to tag on to that. If you go, I can put this, I should put this in the chat. If you go to animationguild.org, that is our union. Unfortunately, production is not a part of the union, but artists are part of the union. The majority of the large and some of the small animation studios are part of the union. All the wages are right there. There's a thing called the wage survey. There's wage contracts. You can just look up the average amount that you will be paid. And that's very important for when you're going into negotiations because you can make sure that you're not being underpaid. And when you go into negotiations, what I always tell people is go like a hundred dollars more than the average because then you'll at least get the average or you may get a little bit more money. It's very transparent. We yeah. get paid great. It's something to show your parents. Yeah. And your grandparents yeah. and aunts and uncles so that they know you will be okay and that you will not be hitting them up for money and living in their basement forever. Right. <laughs> There's actually a girl in my studio. She went five grand above and she just got it. Good for Wait, her. Do that. Just just ask. Okay. Forget the hundred bucks. Do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Just do that. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Because what know, are they going to do? I'm glad oh, that you brought that up. That's, that's, the, that's, <laughs> because... that's the conversation we can have now. So like, I feel like a oh, really quick story. So like, I think, sorry. Um, like, I think uh, with studios, they're always going to lowball you. And when I was coming up with my um, uh, deal with Disney TV, I just like, you know, like just throw out like the, the, the highest number you can, you know. And um, if they really want you, which they do, that's why they reached out to you and they'll meet it. And uh, <laughs> just like, yeah, I mean, I think like, uh, um, I think one of the things about like, um, you know, negotiating, it's really, really tough. But like, I think like, I will always say, sorry, Sony or Disney or wherever you are, like, they're always going to low volume. So you have to go up, 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 up. And, um, and if they really want you to be like, oh, we can't do that, but we can meet you down here. But you always want to go up know your worth because you're fucking worth it and um and that's why they reached out to you you know sorry, you, sorry. <laughs> and you're you're in a position to up your um game you know you're in that position 
So, I mean, I know that's a little bit scary. I mean, like I was scared about it a little bit, but like, you know, if you go up too much and they go, oh, that's too much for us, then you're like, okay, fine. Um, then we can meet in the middle, but like, um, they're always going to lowball you in the beginning. That's, that's so true. If your first job, they're going to be like, lowball you in the beginning. And I, I just want to make it very clear. If you ask for that high number, just like you said, and they say no, don't don't cop attitude. That's not the time. Ooh. That's not the time. Probably not going to be hired by any studios uh, like in L.A. But like, I think like, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, like, um, yeah, um, yeah, just uh, just uh, kind of like build uh, from there. So. Yeah, sorry. I also just want to like quickly point out like just because again like this is like Rise Up reaches out and to black indigenous people of color like a lot of us come from not money <laughs> like a lot of us you know immigrant not parents money. yeah not money just a lot of us come from not money <laughs> not money, yeah. not money. Uh, and immigrant parents did the world for us you know but they also worry no family that cares about you wants to see you struggling. No, and yes, there is a lot of stigma against the starving artist, you know, like no one wants to, and, and you know, like when you, when you live for something that's that, the truth is that animation is very ba based on passion and dreams. That the, people don't always make it, you know? So the first thing that they hear is like, oh, my, my child is gonna end up like living in someone's basement across the country, like eating like ramen noodles for like 10 years. And like, you have to, it, it helps to, to have knowledge of that kind of stuff, of finances, of things like the guild, which, you know, has so many benefits of being a part of. The more you come up to them with a plan saying like, hey, this is, I'm going to be fine. The more they can look at that and be like, oh, okay, you, you'll be fine. I think, I guess, you know? And the more you can kind of like qualm that fear, the, the more, the more supportive they will be. Because at the end of the day, mo you know, if, as assuming that, you know, we have good parents and whatnot, they just, it's that they care. They just don't want to see you, you know, crash and burn and fail and, and struggle forever, you know? So mm -hmm. if you can, if you can, show them that that's not going to happen or at least that you have a plan to mm -hmm. to to try and make sure that doesn't happen as best as possible their fears will relax a little more 100 mm percent -hmm. yeah definitely don't just walk up to your parents like i'm I have a dream <laughs> i'm making it don't i'm moving to la with nothing in my pocket and yeah don't do that actually real talk you want to just talk finances if you can move with one to three months of savings before you get out here. And if you can come out here for a couple of days, either getting an Airbnb or staying at a hotel or staying with a friend and actually drive around and look at apartments, that'll help you rather than just moving out here with nothing and just staying in your car until you get an apartment. So try to do some like recon because that'll do a lot if you're needing to discuss this with your family of convincing them that this is more than the dream I actually put in the legwork. Like if you can come to your parents and say, hey, I've done some research. Here are the places I'm looking at. Here are the apartments I'm looking at. Here's the rent. Here's how much I've saved. Here's how I will practically go about doing this so that I'm not borrowing money from you in 90 days. Like if you can like <laughs> literally give your parents like a PowerPoint presentation. If you do that, they might go, oh, oh, this is like for real, for real. You're not just going to move out there with like a paintbrush palette and a guitar. Okay. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I think we're, we're better off with this now. You joke. My mom said that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, was told, I was talking to her by plan because I'm in that process now where I've got to move out to LA. And she was like, well, I know the apartments are expensive. I could help you out. I was like, mom, I want you to understand. I move out there with an apartment. You help me out once. I still can't afford it the next three months. So I need to find a different apartment. Mm -hmm. Having that plan and having that grounded idea of your goal, that's next level. Yeah. And that just actually, that's not just for when you move the first time. That's like forever. You know, that's when you're also wanting to buy a house. That's when you're ready for your next job. 
That's just yeah. like a, a life thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so how do we end this, guys? So, so like, um, like <laughs> it's one thirty. Oh um, my gosh! Here for a minute. Thank you. Yeah, oh, so I just wanted. To, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt oh, you. Right. Right. Nope. Oh, I just want to say nope. I know we couldn't nope. get to all the. Qu you guys asked great questions in the Q and A. I know we couldn't get to all of them, but all these folks, we're in Rise Up. We're in Black and Animated. We're in Asians and Animation. We're, I think between all of us, we're in every single organization on every Discord. Yep. So join the Discords, join groups. You can ask your questions there. Either one of us or someone else in the group will be able to answer your questions for you. So you're, you know, we're, we don't want to just leave you out in the darkness. <laughs> right, 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 exactly, exactly. And, uh, and, right. and, and right. Like, right. feel free to reach, I mean, like, especially, like, I don't know how everybody else, like, I don't want, I don't want to send everybody to, like, blowing up everyone's DMs, but at least for me, like, reach out to me on Discord, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, if you want help with stuff, if you have questions, like, I know how many people came and helped me when I had questions, like, I'll get to it when I get to it, because if I'm busy, then, like, I'm busy, but I want to help, and you can come, you know, like, to, so many people in this industry want to help, especially everybody here in this panel. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Like, feel free to, to do the same with me. I'm totally open to it. I want to do the same that so many have done for me, and I want to return the favor. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me up wherever, too. Instagram, <laughs> LinkedIn, not on Facebook. I don't check my Facebook. Oh, I'm I sorry. I love it. I love it. <laughs> if, like, yeah. my... I don't check my Facebook either. But. <laughs> so basically, uh, no to Facebook. Joseph, but if, with me. if you message us on Instagram or LinkedIn or Discord, you will you will get a response. <laughs> basically, yeah. 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 Amazing. Oh, and this is outside the topic, but I just want to say because I realized I never said at the beginning, Kayla is also a Rise Up alum. I realized yes. I didn't actually say that <laughs> up top, so I just want to just let everybody know that she also went from mentee to professional on the other side. So yep. wanted to make sure I love it. everybody knew. Yep. Give question. Props. Question. If I was a mentee one time, does that mean yes. I am also? You too. Uh, you as well. You as well, yes. Gabe. And Joe is just an all around awesome dude. He does great art. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get like, we we get like one of those like LinkedIn, LinkedIn certified, like rise up and <laughs> Yeah. We should just make like those iron on patches. Yes. So. I would so get that. Yes. Yeah. That'd be awesome. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I mean, like, sign up for Rise Up Animation and uh, hope you guys are doing okay. I mean, like, um, I, I'm okay. I mean, like, in LA, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, yeah, that sounded very concerning. It's like, he's like I'm, I'm okay, I just, really. I just got really mom. I, I just got really mom on everybody because, because you know, like the Delta variant and all the kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. But uh, um, I hope you guys are doing all, all okay. Um, thank you guys so much for being a part of this panel. Uh, Joe, Garnett, Angela, of course, uh, Gabe, and uh, Kayla. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And um, you know what? Actually, for every attendee on the uh, chat, we're, we're going to be working with you soon. So, like, um, you know, don't give up. Um, I would say keep pushing. And um, hopefully you kind of took this advice and uh, we will be kind of working with you in the industry very soon. I'm very confident of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you guys all. And Bobby, thank you so thank much for you. having us. You're always a joy. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Bobby, just every weekend, every weekend doing panels, Bobby's always Bobby. doing talks, always doing the thing. You're just made of energy. Just so impressed, man. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to all work together at some point. And, um, and so let's make that happen, guys. Um, don't give up. Honestly, we don't give up. Don't give up. I mean, don't give up. That's what I'm to say, right? <laughs> Sometimes that's all you can say, you know? Yeah. Sometimes that's all you can say. Yeah. I love you guys. Um, I, thank you, panelists. I love you, panelists. Um, even though I just met you, I truly love you to your hearts and bones. Um, and, uh, attendees, I love you 
honestly to your hearts and bones um this is a great community so like let's let's keep it going all right absolutely yes all right everybody. mrs pontius you raised an, an excellent excellent young man oh yeah, yeah. bye bobby's you, mom you, you, you did, bye, you did mom. good mom. oh wait did we bring her on like what? Yeah, <laughs> we yes, real quick, real quick. Do. real quick. Real quick, okay, special oh, guest. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Mom, are you there? Mom. Mom. I'm here. I'm here. <gasps> Turn on your uh, video. <laughs> do you have teeth? Do you have teeth on? Mm, don't know how. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, turn on your video. Where do I go? What? I only see the mute thing. Oh, just like go in the top corner, turn top on your corner. video. Okay, hold on. Um, yeah. It's the best day. I only have the you, mute can, you can, you can, sorry, you can turn on your video, Mom. Can you do that? Where's that at? Uh, hold on. Are you are you on mobile or de desktop? Desktop. Sorry guys, I know this is the bottom left. Okay, but in, like, the, in the bottom, yeah. the we'll bottom do bottom three bottom seconds. Of, we'll do three seconds. Three seconds with my mom, and then we'll go. Um. <laughs> uh, how how can I do that? Like the video. It should be yeah. the mute button. The camera icon in the bottom left. Bottom left. I know, but I only had the mute thing. Oh, wait. oh is it not um, showing uh, that video? Do you have a camera? Oh, maybe she doesn't have a Do you have a camera on, Mom? No, I don't. Oh. You don't have a camera? Mm, I do, but it's not highlighted. Okay, so just click on that. Click on where? I think she said it's not highlighted, like it's not there. Oh, it's not highlighted? Mm -hmm. Hmm. This is, so much, this is like Mitchell the biggest waste of time of everyone's <laughs> Well, we, we at least still get to hear your mom. Absolutely. Uh, and that's great. Okay, we'll talk in, rename, like, remove. Hey, mom, how's it going? Oh, wait, actually, let me do this. Um, uh, oh. You can actually do it. It's going to be like the greatest moment of this panel. Like, yes. <laughs> Mom, where's that going? Nope, nothing. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Um, where'd you go? Okay. Hey guys, I know this is <laughs> this is the way that you wanted to spend. <laughs> this is the best part of this entire. Best part. This is the best, this is yes. the best Sorry. way that you wanted. This only. So oh, there you go. Oh, Start so video. Oh. Yay! Yay! Hi everyone! Oh, oh, so watching the whole oh, thing. You are the winner. You've officially blown up the chat. This is delightful. <laughs> Hello. Silly. What's up? I love How you. you doing? Gabe is so funny. Thank you. <laughs> You're so Gabe sweet. Thank you. Mom. Everyone is so good. Good. I will ask I you. I love this amazing panel. Ask one, ask Gabe one question. Oh, uh, well, are you married, Gabe? <laughs> you sound just like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm trying to work on it. Like I mean, I'm lying. Guy? I'm not trying to work on it, but it's a thought. I'll get there. Are you just like Bobby? Oh. <laughs> Bobby, right here. Right with me. Bah, working on it. <laughs> I've been asking him for a grandkid. Ooh. Oh my goodness. What hey, is Bobby, the, what, what's it. happening? This thing in we can just go get you I'm sorry. Yes, nice. yes, welcome. 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 Son. Nigeria wives be awesome too. You be I'll get you set up. <laughs> we'll take a trip. We'll take a trip. It's been but a it's been a minute since I've been back. But I think I like him better single. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, he just has to find the right girl for him. <laughs> right, son? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Such a mom moment. <laughs> <laughs> so
such a mom moment. But what do you want from me, mom? <laughs> a grandkid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm getting old. I'm old, son. I oh, your mom's the best. Hey, you're like, can you please <laughs> come on every panel that we do? This is wonderful. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's a good thing my hair is okay today. Your hair looks hair awesome. Yeah, your hair awesome. Looks, your hair looks Normally, awesome. it's all like <laughs> on the tail. So all you want is a grandkid. You don't care about the girl. <laughs> Well, the girl especially, prior, I mean, yeah. priority. Okay, okay. But more grandkids. Just one is enough. Smart. Aww. That's a smart thing to That's say. One, one, yeah. You yeah. be careful what you ask for. Sometimes you say grandkids. <laughs> Plural. <laughs> one of your cousins pop out nine, and then you're like, well, you asked for this. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And they're gonna drop I them know. off at your house. Okay. You, you, you have a team of children. <laughs> I just want to have a grandkid before I go. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. Working but on it. no pressure, but, Bobby. Uh, sure. <laughs> you'll come. The right time, guys. It'll, girl. Come. it'll come on the right time. Yeah. Yeah. What if we had just a panel that was like, can we have grandkids? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's Everybody really brings all, the all, all yes. the animated moms and dads just like, oh my so, god. So this animation Wait. thing's going well, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh kids and uh your mortgage, when's that happening? Oh my gosh. That'd be so funny though. Like just like bring your bring your kid to the panel day. Like the kid oh, yeah, that the would be kid. fun. Kids say the wildest things sometimes. It's really funny. And it's, I love seeing other people's kids on the screen. Because, mm-hmm. like, Amy will bring her kid and be like, can you say hi? And he's like, no, and walks off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm not, a, I'm not your right. chain circus animal. Right, so Don't work for peanuts. Before this ends, like, we got, I got to take a picture with, uh, on a panel with my mom. <laughs> no, not yet, mom. Not yet, mom. Okay, so, She's ready. Three, two, what? <laughs> it's just the peace sign is funny. <laughs> the peace sign is funny. Well, I can't do this thing so good. Yes. Oh, uh, looks great. Uh, oh, oh, should we do another one? Oh, geez. Uh, so everybody okay. out the heart. Everybody do the heart. All right, everyone do the heart with my mom. <laughs> do one. And then another thing that my mom likes to do is like, can you guys all do like this? Oh, oh yeah. my God. I love to do this. <laughs> very I love to do this. Okay, ready? Okay, sorry. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. I love this. Why is that animation <laughs> has hit an official low? <laughs> no, official, I, uh, you, you mean official, official high, high, right? Yeah, high. Official yeah. high, yeah. Bobby. That's just, this is going to be the title of the YouTube video. Just yeah. Bobby's mom comes online. Forget everything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have, this is the moment where this organization peaked. <laughs> and after this, we're just going to try to get to this level every time. We're around 20, you know, 25, 20, 30. Be like, yeah, yeah, we've been around for like, you know, 5, 10, 15 years yeah. with the best. The best was when Bobby's mom. Uh, so I'll, I'll let everyone get up uh, long about their day, but like mom, um, tell people. It's good today, Bob. Oh. Only one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, where, where I was cursing. Uh, one uh, word. I, I will say let's, let's get along with our weekend, but like mom, like what's, what's the best thing that's happened to you uh, this weekend so far? And then we can end it at that. Best thing happened to me this weekend? Nothing yet. It's only Saturday. Hey. <laughs> okay. He's, he's planning. Know. He's planning something. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> I'm dead. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you thank for you Thank you for showing me to your panels. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on it. I can't thank you enough. You are the best person I've talked to. I love you all. Love you too. Thank you. you. I tried to to watch it Saturday, every Saturday. Oh, 
Because that's the only time that I can see my son. Aww. You know, because we haven't seen, we haven't been together for like more than a year. Aww. So I don't, I try not to miss it. Oh, I want to cry. Aww. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Where do you live? Bromerton, Washington. Oh. oh. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, Love you, mom. Love you too much. Thank you, everybody. Angela, I love you. Uh, thank you. Aww, I yeah. do, Bobby. Yeah. Thank you guys thank you for, for being an awesome panel. Thank you guys, thank you yeah. guys in the chat. Y'all are the yeah. best.